and welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium where we're ready to get the 17th meeting between the Diablos of Mission Viejo and the Chargers of El Toro. We'd like to remind you that tonight's ball game is sponsored in part by Ballpark Pizza, home of the free throw. Located in the Ortega Business Center in San Juan Capistrano and Town Center in Laguna Nigel. And we had a chance to have a bite of that pizza before the game and it was pretty good, Paul. No, it definitely was. Thanks for, uh, thanks for bringing it over, Ballpark. And, of course, we give them the mention just for that. And we're ready to get this game just about underway. I think, Paul, you can't say the importance of uh, getting the ball first and, and trying to set the tone for the game this evening. Oh, yeah, whoever does get the ball first, we're not sure who does get it. But uh, Scott Toppo for El Toro on the very first kickoff of the year returned the ball 90 yards for a touchdown. So you never know, he could uh, pull off another one just like that tonight. I think that pretty much told the story of El Toro. Offensively, they've been able to do the job. Their shortcomings lie in both the combination of their defense, whether on the young side and their special teams. Exactly. Mission Viejo has just got a powerful football team. El Toro um, gave up 21 points last week late in the uh, second half to Dana Hills. So we're going to have to see if they can hold off on the test tonight. And we've got almost a capacity-packed crowd here. We're looking at about 5,000 fans. And, of course, this rivalry just dates way back. And just to go back to last year's game, was a real tough one, a 9-7 ball game, Mission Viejo winning. And for El Toro, of course, it was a tough ball game because their starting quarterback, Brett Johnson, who's now redshirting over at UCLA, was injured for that game. Oh, yes. And, uh, of course, El Toro won CIF champions. And Mission Viejo did lose in overtime in the CIF game. But I think you'll find uh, a totally different ball game tonight. There's a shot at the Diablos. As you see, they'll be in the red uniforms with uh, the yellow shorts as they run out onto the field. The home Diablos just put together quite a team, not only doing so well offensively, but defensively. They've only given up 28 points all year, including two shutouts. Exactly. They have had some real big football games here, and the home team is used to seeing them win. And, you know, El Toro w normally plays here, obviously, on their home on their home game. And now they're on the opposite side of the field. I don't know if that's going to make a difference tonight. But, of course, we're going to probably have more Mission Viejo people here than El Toro people tonight. And as you see, almost at midfield are the Chargers of El Toro, as they'll be wearing the white uniforms. And we're just about ready to get this ball game underway. Meanwhile, you know, we were talking about the tough defense of Mission Viejo. Uh, you've got to watch out for Penn Bouchon, number 48. Defensive end, I mean, he's just done it all this year, including probably the big play of last week's ball game, yep. the safety against Capo Valley. Yeah, that really uh, hurt Capo Valley, and that set the tone for the game. And as we can tell, it is Scott Topo back to receive the kick. And uh, you've got to keep an eye on him. I'm sure that maybe Eric Dekdahl might kick the other way, knowingly that he uh, has returned a uh, touchdown already this year. Kicking off, it will be number 34, Eric Ekdahl. You'll see a lot of him. He plays tailback. He plays wide receiver. He kicks off. He kicks extra points. He kicks field goal. And El Toro did win the toss, and they will elect to receive. And Mission Viejo will be kicking off. So you'll be seeing the high-powered offense of El Toro getting on the field first, while Mission Viejo will be getting that top-flight defense onto the field. Exactly. And it will be a, a good start to see if uh, Mr. Stenstrom can come out and see what he's going to do. I, I think they might start off with a run trying to widen the... Uh, Diablo's defense out a little bit. Well, we'll find out the answers to all these questions as we get tonight's game underway. Here we go. And it's a good kick going deep, and I don't think they'll try and touch this one. They'll down it, and El Toro will start first and 10 at their own 20. They sure will. Honestly, I don't think I've seen a receiver return an Eric Ekdahl kick this year. He always kicks it in the end zone. You were mentioning Ekdahl, the leading scorer in all of Orange County. He's done it with touchdown scoring 10. Here are the Chargers' offense. Uh, Mark, you want to take it, take it away there? Sure. Quarterback will be Steve Stenstrom. In the backfield, David Nemeth and Danny Maestas. Which receivers are Drinkwater and Bavonia and Bo Haley. Offensive Sorry. line, Miller, Cottrell, Walker, Adams, and Heiser. They'll be starting off first and ten. And they're right away looking to go to the pass. Can't find the receiver. Has to go right side. It's up and tipped oh, out of yeah. bounds. Definitely good play. Good defensive play on the coverage was number two, Jeff Jurgemeyer, to break that up. And we saw right away uh, the defense of Mission Viejo putting some pressure on the quarterback, Steve Stenstrom. They sure will. They almost got in there for the sack, but Steve Stenstrom does have quite an arm. It kind of reminds you sometimes of uh, Brett Johnson. I saw him throw one touchdown pass this year in the corner of the end zone. That was just incredible. He's got some good ball handling. The incomplete pass sets up a second down and 10 yards to go. Stenstrom calls the signals. One man backfield. Receivers wide to either side. Three man front being shown by Mission Viejo. The gift goes right side to Nemeth. He cuts back up to about the 24. A gain, and that'll bring up a third down and six situation. A couple of Mission Viejo men in on the tackle. Uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. 
to see if they're going to run or pass. Obviously, it's a it's a passing situation. Here's the replay. You can see it. Nemeth gets cut, gets cut down early around the, the gaining about four yards. And we'd like to remind you our instant replays tonight are sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people at Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. Helping out on that tackle was number 76, defensive tackle Mark Sliming goes at 6'3", 235, he's a junior. Third down, six yards to go from their own 24-yard line. El Toro calls the signal, set up in the eye formation. Sendstrom calling the signals. And the give is right side, and he pulls his way up to the 31, and it looks like good enough for a first down for the Chargers of El Toro to give going to number 38, fullback Pete Nemeth. They did, they did choose to do the run, and they picked up the first down. It's, uh, I think that Coach Johnson is going to set the stage here. Here's the replay. Same play as the uh, last play that he did run on, and he's just a bull of a runner and gets the first down. And you can expect Nemeth uh, to hear that name a lot. He likes to carry the ball to fullback, and it's interesting to see El Toro setting up the run before they're going to their pass. I think it's that uh, spreading out the defense. It brings up first and 10 from their own 31-yard line. Sensum calls the signals out of the eye. It's a fake. He rolls left, has the pass on the run to Nemeth to the 40, 45, and finally brought out of bounds at the 47-yard line for another El Toro first down. Mark uh, uh, Nemeth was wide open all the way coming out of the backfield and it was obvious he was going to throw right to Nemeth but uh, I don't think the Diablos could pick that up as quick. And it was a good pickup of 17 yards finally knocked out of bounds by number 35. I love this name Stoney Corbin. There you can tell it's uh, Stenstrom just hits hits Nemeth wide open in the uh, right up in the first down yardage there. Picks it up on the second effort in the run going out of bounds. It was a good pass, but it was also a nice catch by Nemeth. The 17-yarder sends up a first and 10 from their own 47-yard line. Senstrom working out of the eye formation. That's a five-man front for Mission Viejo. The give is to the up man, up for about two, three yards, about up to midfield where he's brought down, bringing up second and eight. It's going to be uh, interesting to see how often. It looks like they're mixing up the pass and run, Coach Johnson is. That it is. Uh, they got a couple of good running plays yeah. now with the big pass play, and I think that it has left it to the point where Mission Viejo has, cannot cheat on either side. They, exactly. They've seen they can run, they see they can pass. I'm sure after a while that things will settle, and these guys are probably pretty, uh, pretty nervous right now, and I'm sure after the first series of play, they'll settle down and start keen on what they have to do to stop, stop uh, the Charger offense. And we've got a timeout referee right now talking to one of the Mission Viejo defensive players. You know, we talked about this rivalry and emotion. And right now it seems to be El Toro is using that emotion off their first offensive series, hoping that, uh, of course, El Toro will be able to get the ball rolling. And Bob Johnson, of course, would like to see that happen this evening. I think the best thing that could have happened to El Toro did is that they got the ball. They need to have the ball. They're going to run the ball, and they're going to they're gonna see if they can hold on to that clock to keep... Uh, Troy Kopp and Eric Dekdahl off the field. But right now it's Steve Stenstrom and his offense on the field. He's got a second down, and we'll call it about eight yards to go from just about midfield. Working out of the I formation, the give is left side to Nemeth. He goes left for about two, three yards down to the 47-yard line. That was Danny Maestas on the uh, on the run on the left side. And it, they're just really establishing a good running game, which is surprising to, uh, I think, myself, because I expected them maybe to come out past a little bit more. And on the replay, you can tell it's the same play. Instead of going going to Nemeth, they went to Maestas, and he really picks up some good yardage. Well, what they'll do once Nemeth is picking up good yards, you go to your other man, your tailback Maestas, and he picked up a couple of yards there, now leaving them to have to play honest on both ends. And that was a good tackle by Greg Clapper. Got and in solo tackle. Yep, and it brings up the third down. They work out of the eye formation. Receivers wide to either side. They go to Maestas, and he's tripped up just before the first down marker at the 44-yard line. So it's going to bring up a fourth. And interesting to see what they do. I think uh, you'll see them go for it. They, uh, they've been establishing a very good running game, and they've been working on that left, the right side, actually, of the Diablo defense. Just inside the 45-yard line. So far, it's been mainly the run by El Toro. You saw the one pass for the big pickup of 17 yards. Outside of that, it's been the running game of Nemeth and Maestas. Exactly. So we've got a timeout being called by El Toro, and chances are right now Bob Johnson has to make his first big decision of the game. Do we go for the first down, or do we punt it away? That's right. You've got to, you never know. They might throw a pass on this situation, and Sean Drinkwater does come into, come into play. He can, he's a fast guy with some good hands, and I know that Diablo's secondary is, is very aware of what he can do with the football. They most certainly are. As a matter of fact, Drinkwater enters the game as one of the top receivers in all of Orange County. He's second. He's got 32 receptions, averaging almost 17 yards a catch. So if you're going to go for a big play time, this could be the time to do yep. it. Yep. It looks like uh, they're going to punt the ball instead. Well, I'll tell you, that's giving a lot of respect to the Mission Viejo defense, which has right. only given up 28 points all year long. That's right. That's, that shows something. And 
coach Mike Rush is uh, a big defensive fan and he trots off the field. And it's going to make him feel good. That is, I guess, probably uh, the defense and the way they've played this year is what made El Toro decide to punt the ball away. Exactly. Stoney Corbin will be back to uh, to receive the kick. You can't see exactly who else is back there with him. And Bill Denny, it looks yeah, number like. Number 10, Bill Denny, yeah. Who plays on defense at safety and is also a backup quarterback. The punt is away. Fair catch is called at the 16-yard line where Mission Viejo will start up. First and 10. And you can tell that the uh, Diablo fans really get into it. One thing we should thank uh, in the beginning of the game, we should thank both coaches for, for letting us... Uh, okay, it's forgotten. Again, I think we should thank both coaches. In the beginning of the game, they gave up some of their time during the week to show us a little about their offense, and I'm sure the fans appreciate that as well. And now it's time for the Diablos to start first and 10. Their quarterback, Troy Kopp, as they set up deep in their own territory. They'll set up out of their eye, going in motion. And the give is to who else? Eric Ekdahl works his way up to the 25-yard line for a nice eight-yard gain, and right away, Ekdahl getting on the board on those stats. Little stutter step in the beginning, and. Uh, Gave some time for his blockers to knock down the Charger defense, and he moved right up there. He's very quick. You've got to watch him. He can go either direction on the dime. And the only way to describe uh, Eric Ekdahl is that he is a little cannonball. They've got him listed at 5'9", 175, but they find it hard to believe it to the 39-yard line. He was like a 7-pin, just knocking all over the place until he finally fell down at the 39. That's right, Mark. He, and it looks like Scott Toppo. I'm not, I'm not sure if it is Scott Toppo. Here we go on the replay. He just stutter steps once again, and it's it's one of his his uh, patents that he gets down low as well and just cuts through their off, cuts through their defense. And just to remind you, our instant replays tonight are sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people at the Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. And we thank them for their help in bringing us part of this broadcast this evening. We've got an injured player down on the field. Do you have a chance to see who that was, Paul? No, not not as well. I don't. I'm. I'm I think it might be Scott Topo, but I'm not sure. As you can take a look at this big crowd on hand at Mission Viejo District Stadium, uh, you know, El Toro got up to a nice start offensively, even though they had a punt. They did have the ball for three minutes and 21 seconds, and I think the key is, score or not score, the key is to keep the Mission Viejo offense off of the field. Exactly. You're going to see that uh, coming up, I almost can guarantee you that, I can, I can almost guarantee you that Troy Kopp will open it up with a pass. And with an injured player on the field, we will be back after these messages. First quarter score, Chargers nothing, Diablos nothing. Movie after movie. Cinemax. More than 130 different movies in October. Classic movies. New wave movies. Movie star salutes. Tributes to movie masters. Movies for every movie fan. Plus, Cinemax Originals. From legendary performances to all-star celebration. Something wrong with you. See rare concert footage of John Lennon this month on Cinemax. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. We offer genuine savings without gimmicks. And welcome back. It's first and 10. Ekdahl has the ball, 45, 50, and finally brought down in Charger territory at the 48-yard line. The injured player was Scott Topo. He did run off the field, and now actually he's back on the field, so it looks like he probably got the wind knocked out of him. So Eric Ekdahl with another big run and another first down for the Diablos of Mission Viejo. Ek Ekdahl wasting no time running for some good yards tonight. He sure is. They're, uh, they run him a lot, and I'm surprised they haven't given the ball to Jim Hagashi yet. And it'll be first and 10 as they have the ball at the 48-yard line of the Chargers. Calling signals is Troy Kopp. And the give is this time and it is up to, to Agassi. And he and there's a fumble loose ball. And he was thrown back after a couple of yards. I thought the ball went up in the air, but it was just about five Chargers knocking yeah. little Jimmy Agassi yeah. back on his feet. That, that will do that. Uh, yes, that was Jim Agassi on the run. Well, Jimmy Agassi really compliments Ekdahl well. Take a look at the offense. Kopp quarterbacking Agassi. Dark and Ekdahl in the backfield. Baldelli and Williams are your uh, receivers with Bloom. Milton, Ashby, Parks, and Pergakes on the offensive line. And they're a big one, averaging 210 pounds. Brings up second down. Rolling right is Kopp. He gives to Ekdahl. Goes to the outside, and he is quickly brought down at the 43-yard line by the swarming El Toro defense. One thing you've got uh, that we didn't mention is that Troy Kopp is a well-running quarterback. 
they've got a key on him, and Ekdahl does the option, and Troy Cobb can keep the ball and gain some good yardage himself. He's a big kid. Take a look at the defense for Mission VA for El Toro. It's Miller, Tamparelli, and Berry on the line. Aurora, Weedman, Pallone, and Haas linebackers. Defensive backs, Papo, Bavonia, Miller, and Acker. We've got a third down, and we'll call it about five yards to go. Set up on the left side. Cop back to pass. He's got some time. Looks at his receiver, Williams, and he does. And where he fell down, it's going to be real close to a first down. We might have to take a measurement. That was a nice catch by Damon Williams. He was wide open. Came out, came out of his formation. He was wide open. Good catch. And they signaled it was a first down, so I said it was close. What do I know? I guess yeah. that's why I'm up in the broadcast. <laughs> So it's a first down, and they're using the receivers. Williams, a man they might not go to that often, but using him in a key situation. That's right. He was wide open, so you might as well go to him. That's right. And as you can remember, Coach Russ said he's going to mix it up, and he is mixing it up really well. And it's a first down and 10 for the Diablos of Mission Viejo at the El Toro 37-yard line. Set up out of the eye formation. The give is to Ekdahl going straight up the middle. He gains maybe two yards. We'll be generous in calling that. And good defense by El Toro, bringing him quickly Roar down. Got in on step Roar, outside linebacker in on the tackle. Very good tackle. They, they could key on, uh, they are keen on Ekdahl. But when you key on Ekdahl, you've got to remember that you've got Troy Kopp again who can run the ball or pass it and Jimmy Higashi. Well, I think as they have such a good offense, so many people to key on, if you overplay one person, it's going to leave the Damon Williamses open That's in the exactly. ballgame. That's how uh, Eric Dechtal scored last year in an overload bring, capo defense. It brings up second and eight in the passing formation of Scott. He dumps it off to Ekdahl, makes the catch to the 35, going sideline 30, 25, and finally knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line, and that means another Diablo first down. It's, uh, it's you're, you're seeing the Diablo offense at its best. They are mixing up really well, and Ekdahl came out of the backfield to get this pass. He really caught the ball on the cuff of his uh, knees there, sprinted right. And one thing you gotta watch about Eric, he is a very smart football player. He knows when to get out of the bounds and he knows where the yard markers are. And the little cannonball doing the job. Yeah. He's, he's done it so far running, he's been catching the passes, and so far you're really seeing everything that Eric Ekdahl can do. That's right. And for Mission Viejo, it's their fifth first down on this drive. First down and 10 just inside the 25-yard line. The give to Ekdahl, he goes left side, pulls his way down to about the 20-yard line, and Eric Ekdahl left, Eric Ekdahl right, Eric Ekdahl catch a pass right side, Eric Ekdahl catch a pass left side. Oh yes, Brian Haas made a good tackle on that play for the Charger defense. And it's you're going to see a lot of open field uh, tackles by the Chargers defense. They're very quick, and they are agile. And they can, they, they, if they're keen on that goal, you're going to see them get in there on them. And right now, Mike Rush is seeing exactly what he wants from his offense. Stay on the field, make the El Toro defense work. It brings up a second down, and we'll call it seven yards to go. The give is to Ekdahl. He's down back to the line of scrimmage, and that's just about it, where he's swarmed down by a couple of defenders, uh, led by number 51, Tad, Tad Wegman. Yeah, he really, he really got in there and made a nice tackle. It's, you've got, I wonder how, how many times they're going to run, Eric. They've already gotten six first downs. And here on the replay, you can see that Tad gets in there to make a nice stop. He's doing that stutter step a little bit to try to get in there. Nice and open field tackle. And just to remind you, our instant replays tonight is sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people of the name brand furniture outlet in Mission Viejo. Back to the action. Cop back to pass. He's got time. Oh. Looks over the middle and incomplete off the receiver's hand and almost intercepted. That was a pass right on the money there. It sure was, except he just could not haul it in. And so that's going to bring up a fourth down situation. And we'll be seeing Eric Ekdahl, who catches the ball, runs the ball, and guess what? He also kicks the ball. He sure does. He kicked a 49-yarder this year against University. It was a shot. He has kicked four field goals on the season, along with 19 extra points. And so he's even a scoring threat when he's just kicking the ball. And this will be a kick from 38 yards for Ekdahl, trying to get Mission Viejo on top early. The snap is good. The kick is up, it's up, and it is good! And Mission Viejo takes a 3-0 lead with 3.27 remaining to play in quarter number one. That's his line drive kick there, Mark. He did it with the 49-yarder. He's, he's a low uh, We made it, eh, hombre? <laughs> Well, 
Wayne Gretzky wins the game for the Kings. The excitement of Los Angeles Kings hockey has never been greater. Catch the great one in action 62 times this season, exclusively on the Prime Ticket Network. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. Put us to the test. Come in and see how much you can save. Well, Here we go on the replay. You can tell that Eric Ekdahl really gets underneath the ball. The ball is just beautifully kicked. And here's his reaction. He knows it's good. As it goes right through the uprights and back to live action, Ekdahl fires one oh. out of the end zone, Boy. so not even the opportunity for the Chargers of El Toro to return that kick. I, I really don't think you're going to see the Chargers returning a kick this year for our, tonight, actually, for the uh, for the re, for the kickoff or the punt. Well, also you have to remember it's the first three points of the game. Ekdahl put the points on the board. He was juiced and he just kicked it out oh, of yeah. the end zone. There was and there's no defending that. Right. For El Toro, it will be first down and 10 yards to go. The Chargers find themselves down 3 to nothing, and sometimes any deficit against this Mission Viejo Diablo team can be a tough one. Yep. Let's see how Steve Stenstrom and company respond to it. First and 10 from the 20, they work out of the I formation. Receivers wide to either side. The give is straight up the middle to Nemeth. He picks up two yards, and that's it, before he's brought down quickly by the defense of Mission Viejo. Jeff Clark got in there for the tackle for the Diablos, and Coach Mike Rush, is, our Coach Rush is using his pro 3-4 defense he basically said it was the Oklahoma defense five down linemen and four deep in the secondary yep and that's what they like to use and it's worked well so stick with what yeah, works yeah exactly now you were talking about uh, the defense earlier of the Kentucky 60s by El Toro we'll get into that a little later on yeah. on exactly how they develop that defense but meanwhile, offensively for El Toro, it's second and long. They work out of the eye. The receivers wide to the left-hand side. Back to pass is Stenstrom. He's got some time. Looks sideline. Hits his man at the 28. Works his way up just short of the 30-yard line and just short of the first down before he's brought down by number 50 for Mission Viejo. That was a nice, nice move by the receiver. He, he, was looking to get, he was looking to get the first down, as you can tell. Catches the ball. Play challenge. With a three-man backfield, I'd say you're right. They go to the run. It's a first down a little more. Brought down at the 35-yard line. As Coach Johnson said, that on this wide-open offense, he tries to spread out their defense, and he'll run the ball on third down, most often giving it to Nemeth. And Nemeth, who's the name who you will hear quite often in the El Toro offense, is 5'10", 192-pound senior, and so far we've been calling his name a lot. You can expect him to carry the ball anywhere between 20 to 30 times in a exactly. given evening. He's their meat of their offense on the run. And he, he's not a bowling ball, but he, he's, he's a big guy yeah. at 5'10", 192, and he'll knock some bodies around before the evening's he's, over. He's definitely got the experience of some big games. First and 10 from the 35-yard line, working with a three-man backfield. Big front line there for Mission Viejo. The fake Stenstrom on the run, looking to pass. Hits his man, Nemeth, who is finally, check that, number 33, who's brought down at the 47-yard line for El Toro. Got me. We're going to find out who that is for you. That's a wonderful catch, and there's the replay. Wide open again, makes a nice diving catch. Yep, and so far they've been doing a nice job really mixing it up and making that reception was Brian Haas, who Brian is uh, Haas, yeah. seeing some action on offense, normally a defensive player in the linebacking court, but I guess when you need some extra offensive players, yeah. you'll do anything that it takes to move the ball against Mission Viejo. First and 10 for the Chargers. They've got the ball oh, at the 47-yard okay. line, and our first flag of the game, and it looks like it was uh, offside by the Charger offensive line. And it almost looked like Steve Stentrum was ca calling an audible and uh, left, off left offensive line jumped offside. Yep, and one thing, if you're an offensive lineman, you never like to hear your name called because they're the guys down in the trenches. They're doing all the dirty work for the name players, and when your name or number is called, you want to kind of hide and get back into that exactly. huddle. It's, uh, El Toro's all, always have been famous for their big, big offense and defensive linemen. This year, they don't have it's the size that they did, but they're doing the job. And they're led by Steve Stenstrom. He'll be calling the signals for the Chargers all night long. That takes him back at the 42-yard line, makes it first down, 15 yards to go. 
to give. This to Nemeth, and he's going nowhere as he is wrestled down by the Mission Viejo defense for a three-yard loss, and they'll call the ball dead at the 36-yard line. Greg Clapper sure did make a good play on that. He held with his blocker, spun off him, and made the tackle. He's got size and speed at 6'1", 190 as the junior, and he's got another year. Here's the replay. Clapper gets in there. The whistle was blown, actually, before the, and, before and the hit. And that is a hard hit on any level of play. Our instant replays tonight, sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people at the Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. This will bring up a long situation. You've got to be expecting a pass on this play by the Chargers of El Toro. Stenstrom calls the signals out of the I formation. He's rolling right. He's got some time, looking deep downfield, hits his man into Mission Viejo territory down at the 46-yard line. Number 22, Jason Vivonia with the reception. That was a very nice catch. They're running that same play. They faked that option, and they go. he rolls out to the right, and he's gotten Jason Vivonia again. Here we go. You can see it. And Vivonia is wide open, and if it wasn't for Vivonia falling, the he Mission Viejo scored. defensive player had slipped down. That could have been six points. Could have been six points easily. He's and got I'll, very good speed. And I'll tell you, so far, I have to be a little bit surprised at the ease that El Toro has been moving the football in this first quarter of they play. Have. You've got to, you've got to second guess that, that first down that they could have went for on the fourth down. And we have come to the end of the first quarter with your score, Mission Viejo 3 and El Toro nothing. It's your chance to make a big hit with the whole family of Ballpark to invite the best pizza, the sandwiches, and complete salad bar. The original sports theme restaurant caters to teams and sports fans of all ages who settle for only the best food and service. I'm Aaron Scott of the Los Angeles Lakers. Ballpark pizza is the best pizza I've ever had. Now open in town center, Laguna Niguel. Pizza fever, catch it at Ballpark Pizza. Welcome back. As you can see, the crowd well into this ball game. Some people showing up tonight, uh, like not Halloween. with their own hair, but with someone else's. Meanwhile, opening up the second quarter, El Toro has the ball at the Mission Viejo 47-yard line. Stenstrom calling the signal. Fakes the run. He's looking to pass. Goes left side. And a nice reception made by El Toro down at the 35-yard line, making the reception number 33. And uh, Stenstrom is 5 for 6 already in the first, in the first half. And Brian Haas, who's a surprise offensive starter, go. has made two receptions on this drive for El Toro. That was a beautiful catch. You've got to sure. give credit to Steve Stenstrom. He makes, he does a heck of a job covering the ball up on the fake. And he's done a real good job. Only a junior. He's still got one more year That's to right. go. And you have to remember, entering tonight, he's the fourth-rated quarterback in all of Orange That's County. Right. Moving the ball via the pass, mixing it up with the run. El Toro has the ball at the 35-yard line of the Diablos of Mission Viejo. Stenstrom calls the signals. Back to pass. He's got time. Now under some pressure, and he is sacked. The first sack of the evening. It goes to number 75 of Mission Viejo, the news guard, Mike Madero, at 5'10", 220. If he comes in your way, you better either get out of the way or just fall down. He sure did get in there. He's, he's, he's a fast young man to be able to pick off a quarterback that quick and get around his tacklers. You, you know that Steve's thinking about that. And Madero was a key part of the defense last week in their 16-0 victory. He did have two sacks, so just continues to pile up the That's sack right. count. That's right. And it was a loss back to the 42-yard line, so it's going to bring up a second and long situation. They work out of the I formation, receivers wide to either side, five-man front being showed by Mission Viejo. Looks like possible blitz situation. Out of the eye. The give is to Maestas, and he's just over the 40-yard line, down to the 39, where he's brought down by number 30, John Clapper. On that play, Mark, it was it was a very good, very good um, example on how Coach Johnson spreads out the Diablos defense. They were they had a wide stance. Here's their defense again. Number 75 and no guard, nose guard Mike Madero, 76 defensive tackle Mark Stillman, 78 defensive tackle Pat Mitchell, 58 linebacker Chris Wild. Number 30, defense end Craig Clapper, Penn Bouchong, Jeff Jergermeyer, Ger Stoney Corbin, Bill Denny, and Bryce Williams. It brings up third and long situation. They work out of the eye, two receivers wide to the right. Stenstrom rolls right, looking for a receiver, goes right Whoa. side, and almost picked off incomplete. That one was telegraphed all the way, and almost picked off Penn by Bouchon. number 48, Penn Bouchong. He's a heck of a player, and that, that ball probably shouldn't have been thrown where it was, especially with Penn Bouchong around. And the most exciting play when you're a defensive player is thinking offense and scoring points for your team. Bouchong almost picked that off for six. Last week in their 16-0 victory over Capo Valley, he had a safety for two That's points, right. so he did get to the offensive category. He gets around. 
He sure does. And the key defense by Mission Viejo is they were shoring up after saying the Chargers were moving the ball well and they'll get into punt formation. Deep back standing at about the 10 yard line is Mission Viejo where they'll be looking to receive the football. And he they fake it. it. It's a fake. Sean Drinkwater. Drinkwater looking to pass, and it is completed down to the 15, and finally Russell down at the 13-yard line, catching the ball for El Toro, number 40, tight end Bo okay. Halley. And you knew a fake might be somewhere, oh but boy. I have to admit that threw me off. That was a really good play. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Coach Russ said he was going to mix it up. El Toro mixes it up right here. Bob Johnson saying, I cannot afford to get too far behind against this Diablo defense. Pulls out a trick from Mike Rush's book, and it pays off big. Touchdown saving tackle by Stoney Corbin there. Stoney, I love that name. I wonder <laughs> how he got that nickname. Well, maybe we'll talk to him later. First down and 10 for El Toro. They've got the ball at the 13-yard line, working out of the eye formation. Receivers wide to either side. Stenstrom back to pass. He's drink looking six, going end zone to Drinkwater, drink and he's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown, Drinkwater. Touchdown, Drinkwater, proving why he is one of the best wide receivers in Orange County. It was a one-on-one -on -one play designed all the way. Drinkwater leap, pulled it down, and a nice timing pattern by quarterback Steve Oh, Stenstrom. man, that was a great play. You could tell he was just going for Drinkwater the whole time. And Drinkwater, no take on that. he leaps up in the air as he catches, and Beautiful. he can't defend that. Six points. Even got the two feet in there, and he didn't even need to. It sure was. And now it's time to uh, attempt the extra point as they take a 6-3 lead in the second quarter. We have 9.34 remaining to play in the first half. The kick is up, and it is good. Pete Nemeth kicking. He does the running. Now he does the kicking. And we've got three, nine, excuse me, we've got 9.34 remaining to play in the first half with your score. The Chargers of El Toro, seven, and the Diablos of Mission Viejo, three. Uh, you just got to learn to go with the heat, Rico. The heat is here. Don Johnson, Philip Michael Thomas, Miami Vice. Something's wrong with you. Now the heat's on every night. Watch Miami Vice on USA. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by name brand furniture outlet in Mission Viejo. We offer genuine savings without gimmicks. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium. El Toro, who just took a 7-3 lead, Ooh. kicking the ball off. It's picked up by Mission Viejo at the 10-yard line to the 15 and brought down at the 16-yard line. Good play by El Toro. Jeff Jurgenmeyer did a nice job of getting that ball and almost bounced over his head. Squib kick down, uh, down the field there. For El Toro, that drive, 12 plays, 80 yards, and it was capped off by the touchdown pass from uh, to uh, the receiver Drinkwater from quarterback Steve Stenstrom. You saw, you saw that shot of Troy Cobb. He is a motivator out there. He really gets his, his team going. And the 7-3 to three deficit, I don't think really uh, has anything, is, is going to do anything to Troy Cobb. He can come right back. Well, for Mission Viejo, this is where they have not been too often uh, on the losing end of the score right now. They're down 7-3. We'll see how they respond. Off first down, a quick pass to his receiver to the 35. And finally brought down at the 39-yard line, where he's brought down by number 51, Tad Wheatman. Receiving that for Mission Jonathan Viejo was number five, Jonathan Hayes. So we're really seeing both teams using a lot of their receivers and some people we didn't expect to see playing A lot tonight. of names, a lot of names. A lot of names, more <laughs> names to remember for us broadcasters up here in the booth. It was a pickup up to the 40-yard line, so a pickup of 24 yards on the play. Sets up a first down and 10 yards to go for the Diablos. If you just joined us, El Toro leads in the second quarter by the score of 7-3. to three. In the first quarter, it was a 38-yard field goal by Eric Ekdahl. El Toro bounces back with an 86-yard drive, which was capped off by the touchdown pass from Stenstrom to Drinkwater just a couple of minutes ago. So we're second quarter with the score. El Toro 7, Mission Viejo 3. This is the type of game that folks came to see. Definitely a scoring game. Yep, the rivalry, the emotion playing taking place, and you can sense it on the playing field. First down and 10, got back to pass. He's got plenty of time, looks right side, hits his man, Ekdahl, into El Toro territory down at the 47-yard line. Well, the offensive line sure did give Cop some great protection. They have, and that's the key to their offense being successful because Cop likes to throw that ball up an awful lot. And he knows if he can see Eric Ekdahl, most often he catches it, as you can tell right here. He'll bobble the ball when he gets it, but he holds on. Makes a nice catch and a first down. In between three receivers, three defenders. Yep, our instant replays tonight are sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people at the Neem Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. There, are, 
First down and 10 for Mission Viejo from the Charger 47-yard line. And it's offsides on El Toro, and that'll move the ball five yards further downfield. Mark, I was going to just say, on a couple of plays, they're already in El Toro's territory, and this five yards is going to help them out just a little bit more. Yeah, well, it was interesting to see. You knew Mission Viejo had to get a little psyched up offensively to move the ball after El Toro scored the touchdown. On the other hand, if you're the El Toro defense, you figure, hey, we got the lead. Let's hold it for our team. But so far, it doesn't look like they're doing that defensively on this series. I think both teams are going to be running the ball and passing the ball into the end zone. So far, only two penalties in the game, and they've both been on El Toro. They've been penalized two for 10 yards, that one being a five-yarder. So they'll bring up first and five, and offensively gives you a lot of options to use right here. Troy Kopp calling the signals. It's a fake. They go inside to Exal, but he is brought down at the line of scrimmage. Three men coming down on him quickly. That's showing nice play, but also showing the respect they have for Eric Ekdahl. You've got to watch that quick fake pitch by Troy Cobb. He'll take the ball, and it'll really look like he's pitching the ball, and then he'll hand off inside to Eric Ekdahl. Eric scored against Santa Ana on that very same play. And on the tackle is number 48 defensive tackle Jason Berry. He's a 5'10", 195-pound senior, and he brought Ekdahl quickly down on his feet. So it brings down a second down, and we'll call it six yards. Might have lost a yard on that play for the Diablos of Mission Viejo. Cop straight back to pass under some pressure, dumps it off to Exal, and it's batted down defensively by El Toro. David Curtell. Yep, and number 66 dropping him quickly, and it was almost an interception for six points. Can you see number 66 rumbling down the field on an INT? David Curtell really got in there and made a nice deflection. He's a big guy. You can see how tall he is there. It's pretty tough to overthrow him. He sure is, and he almost returned that one for a touchdown, and you have to remember he knocked it down over the tiny Eric Ekdahl, who once he does catch the ball in middle field, he is quite dangerous. For Mission Viejo, they started off first and five, have not been able to move the ball. It brings up a third, we'll call it about six yards to go. Working third down. Ekdahl set up in the Z-back position. Cop rolling to his left. He's under pressure. There goes down Ekdahl. sideline to Ekdahl, and it's picked off by El Toro. Fine defensive play by the what Chargers. A he stuck, he stuck right with the pass. He was looking at Kopp the whole way. It was a timing pattern, and one of two things Here's were going to happen. Check you out. See Kopp. Watch, watch Eric Dekdahl. He turns his head to go upfield. The defender stops, and there it is. Makes a beautiful interception, number 24 for the Chargers. For El Toro, that is Troy Acker, the 5'10", 165-pound junior. One of two things is going to happen on that play, INT or six points. That's right. And the Chargers come up with a big defensive play. The Chargers of El Toro lead 7-3, seven 7.08 seven remaining to play in the first half. And I think a big factor has been that uh, the El Toro offense has been on the field quite a bit, That's making right. the Mission Viejo defense, which normally doesn't have to work that hard, work hard. Well, when you turn the ball over, that's what's going to happen. You're going you're to have a chance to see. I think the El Toro Chargers will, will open up their offense right here. They, they're probably feeling pretty confident right now. And we have a timeout on the field with 6.54 remaining to play in the first half. Your score, El Toro 7 and Mission Viejo 3. <laughs> I run against a candidate who reminds me of the symbol of his party, the circus elephant, his head full of ivory, a long memory and no vision, and you have seen elephants being led around the circus ring. They grab the tail of the elephant in front of them. Something you. Remembering JFK begins October 23rd on the Disney Channel. Well, so, so far, I'm sorry, Mark, so far, the total time of possession for Mission Viejo has been 7.20 to El Toro is 9.14. So there you can see they're controlling the ball. And that is a key factor. Another key factor, entering tonight's game, Troy Kopp had only thrown two interceptions all year long, and he throws his third of the right, year in the second quarter. And before that interception, he was four for six for 56 yards, so he's having a very good game. Both quarterbacks have been doing extremely well, and here comes El Toro on their last drive, went 86 yards, capping it off with a 15-yard touchdown strike to their top receiver, Sean Drinkwater. First and 10 for El Toro from their own 27-yard line, set out of the eye. The give is to Nemeth, he goes right side, 30. And finally brought down out of bounds at the 33-yard line after a pickup of six. Uh, they're trying that same, this, it looks like they're starting off the same way they were in their first possession, running to the right. They're really working on the Diablos' left side of their defense. And it was a combination of Slime and the Madero bringing him out of bounds. And the key has been for El Toro, it's been the balanced offensive attack, passing the ball very well, running the ball well, and that equals scoring points in time of possession. Exactly. Both teams are really up for this game as well as the fans. El Toro is used to this type of pressure. 
They were down last year and they came back to win it all, so it could be a very interesting game. El Toro with the ball, they're in the white. Mission Viejo on defense, they're in the red. It's second down, we'll call it seven yards to go. And they work a reverse, reverse. and they're looking to pass, going deep downfield to Drinkwater. Drinkwater. He's got it at the 35, cuts inside to the 30 and brought down at the 27 yard line. Big, big play for the charges of El Toro as they are going with trickery and deception, sure. which those were the words of Mike Rush, That's but right. using by Bob Johnson. Exactly, they're really mixing it up. Great catch by Drinkwater, watch this catch. They had Stoney Corbin right next to him and he came back and made the catch. He almost got away, but Corbin got a hold of his jersey. He leaps up in the air as he catches, and you can't defend that. Inside the 30-yard line down to the 27. And after that catch was made, some pushing and shoving going yeah, on. I exactly. think maybe a little bit of frustration yeah. on the part of the Mission Viejo Diablo defense. Actually, my mistake was Bryce Williams who made that touchdown saving tackle. And talking to the captains of both defense of uh, both the defense and offense of both respective teams, telling them keep it clean, just yeah. play a good ball game. It's kind of funny. I've done so many football games this year, and I've seen a whole lot of clean football, and I haven't seen any fights at all. And that shows you the quality of play and the quality of men who you've got on the football field. Brings up first and 10 for the Chargers at the Diablo 27-yard no! line. Stenstrom works out of the eye. Fake rolls to his left. He's got some time. Drink Looks no. over the middle. Zips off to his man. It's completed down to the 13-yard line. And it's another first down. And we've got a flag on the play. We'll have to wait for the call. Bo Haley makes another good catch. Yep, Bo Haley. You saw him on one uh, when they did the fake punt move, as you can see it on the replay. They're really throwing. It looked like they were going to go to drink water, and they dropped it inside. And we do have a penalty on the play. We'll have to wait for the official call. And it's going to go against El Toro, so they'll bring it back. It's going to be, uh, you're going to have to see what they're going to do here. I guarantee you they're going to probably open it up and keep on passing. David Nemeth is really good. David Nemeth is uh, blocking really well for, uh, for Steve Strenstrom, and that's giving him a little bit more time, Mark. And there was a good reason why the ball was caught. It was an ineligible man downfield, oh. and it was called on Bo Haley, <laughs> the man who made the reception. One too many guys going downfield. Yep, so they'll bring it back, and it's the third penalty on the evening against El Toro. Not a costly one, but you don't want to see a penalty when you're moving well offensively. Right. When these two teams normally play, you don't see that many penalties. They're very well coached. They're a smart football team. Bring it back to the fight situation. These guys aren't going to fight. They're going to play. They're out here to play football. I think part of it also is out of mutual respect to make sure you don't get intimidated during the course of the game. El Toro has been penalized three times for 15 yards. Yep, and that's another five-yarder, and they've got the ball back at the Mission Viejo 32-yard line. Calling the signal, Stenstrom, they work out of the eye. The pass. To Vivonia. To Vivonia, and they're looking for again. to drink water, and oh, he can't pull like that one down. No. Nope, incomplete. Yeah, yeah. It's intercepted. It's got to be in the end. Well, one was saying incomplete. The other was saying interception, and I think it's going to go down as incomplete. Boy, if we had our reverse angle hooked up tonight, I think you could see that. It could have been. In, I think it was an interception. Well, watching, they go to Bavonia. Bavonia's the backup quarterback, and he tries to go for six points it's to Drinkwater. He does another leap on the air, but the only problem is this time he's double teamed. They were oh, ready for oh, him. Okay, my mistake. You can see the ball drop in. Great slow-mo action there, guys. Good camera work. So let it go down the records that Paul Higgins <laughs> is not perfect. And I thought you were, Paul. I don't know. <laughs> but I think maybe they just tried one too many tricky plays too often there. With Great Del attempt Toro. by Stoney Corbin, though. You've got to congratulate him on that. It sure was. Playing some good defense is the stone man, Stoney Corbin. They've got the ball second down and 15 yards to go. The, uh, outside give is to Nemeth to the 30, 25, and finally brought out of bounds at the 24-yard line. It's kind of interesting. Vavonia is one for two for 41 yards and throwing the ball not too bad <laughs> for a backup quarterback. Well, hey, that's the way to do it. Let everybody throw the football, and when you got a good backup, why not use them? That's right. And Vavonia plays both offensively and defensively. Only one of two players on El Toro who does that, so you know he's got a lot of athletic ability. Exactly. He wouldn't be out there unless he didn't. This is certainly true. We've got 4.53 remaining to play in the first half with the score. El Toro 7, Mission Viejo 3. It brings up a third down, an eight-yard situation for the Chargers. They've got the ball just inside the 25-yard line of Mission Viejo. Working out of the I formation. Receivers set up wide to the left. That's Drinkwater. And it's a fake. Canada. Left side. Look for him to go to Drinkwater. But now he's got to turn to the right side under pressure. And it's incomplete to Nemeth and give some Boy, credit. Jeff, Jeff Clark really came in and put the pressure on. Sure did. It was uh, Clark along with Monero putting on some pressure. And that, I think, was the first time we've seen all evening long in which uh, the offensive play had to be changed by Stenstrom That's due right. to the rush by Mission Vieja. That was a very strong rush. I'm not sure what exactly happened on the rush, 
they probably just spun off their, their guards and got in there. Well, well anytime they get down, there's a breakdown in the offensive line, but so far, El, El Toro's offensive line has done an excellent job of protecting right. their quarterback. And Nemeth is going to try a field goal, it looks like. And we'll get the exact distance. Looks like it's going to be around a 43, 44 yarder, but the question is, will they go for the field right. goal? 41-yard field goal try. Okay, and let's see if Nemeth can put a field goal up on the board. Ekdahl's done it for Mississippi. The it's there a big. There it is. There they go. The 20, and brought down at the 19-yard line, but it's short of the first down. So El Toro going for another fake. Nice attempt come up by short. Mike Miller, but they did knock him down. That reminds me of last week's Capitol game when they uh, got Capitol's quarterback on that fourth down play that could have, if the Capitol would have made that first down, they would have had a touchdown with TGB running running it in the end zone. It, it's, it's a good thought, but uh, a criticism to make is, and I think El Toro has tried, they've too already many, tried maybe. four trick plays, yeah. and they're two for four. Maybe too many, but hey, that's the way Johnson plays, and he usually wins when he plays. The Bishop Diego defense comes up big. The offense on the field to give it to Echo. Oh, what a he hit. Met, and he is brought down hard by the El Toro defense. Leading the way is number 46 for El Toro. Steph Rohr got in there for that hit on Ekdahl. And you now Watch know why his, and you now know why his last name is Rohr. Rohr yeah. He just roared in with that hit. Oh, he even was uh, getting blocked on that, and he got in there. He most certainly was. Just like to remind you, our instant replays tonight are sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people at the Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. The hard hit brings up second down and ten yards to go. As all Ekdahl did was get back to the line of scrimmage. Exactly. That's the first time he's been really stopped that that abruptly. Cop calling the signals, four-man front for El Toro. He's got all day to throw. He's looking deep nice down pass. the sideline. And the catch, let's see if they rule him in bounds. And they do at the 46-yard line. That Making the catch is number five, Hayes. Jonathan Hayes. Jonathan Hayes made a nice catch, and he got out of bounds. Yep, got Hayes. Enough for the first down. Here you see he just sits right in there. Nice throw by Troy Cobb. He's really really come around this year and throwing the ball. And, he, and he's making sure that he gets one foot in bounds as of course that is the high school That's as right. well as college football rule. He's got to get cop credit. He reads the defenses so well. And Jonathan Hayes not expected to see much action has made two receptions this evening and playing a fine ball game. First and ten for Mission Viejo from their own 45. Cop looking to pass over the middle. Intercepted, Intercepted by Scott Topo. Scott Topo, who now has his fourth interception on the year. He's amongst the county's leaders, and you can see why. That's right, two interceptions already from Troy Cop. You can see this one right into the arms of Scott Topo. Now, the first interception that was made, it was a good play by the defense. This was simply a mistake pass that was thrown by the quarterback for Mission Viejo because there's just too many men in the direction of the receiver. And El Toro continues to control the ball. They're up to 11 minutes and 48 seconds down to Mission Viejo's 8 minutes and or 9 minutes and 20 seconds. So Cop making a key mistake and maybe thinking trying to get 6 points on a quick play. El Toro takes over at their own 35-yard line working out of the I formation. Receivers wide to either side to give up the middle to Nemeth. Oh, oh breaks away. 40. And down at the 45-yard line. Good for a first down where he's finally brought down by number 35 along with number 43. So Bryce Williams, when you know you got your D-backs making the tackles, you know the runners are doing their job offensively. This is, this, this is a great example to the young kids playing football, second effort. He keeps his feet going, keeps his head down, and he's just going all the way. That play tells you how tough it is for the offensive lineman. Number 67, Chad Heiser, put on a great block, and he exactly. just fell right down to the ground. First and 10 for El Toro from their own 45-yard line. Stenstrom calls the signals, goes straight up the middle to Nemeth, works his way up to the 49-yard line for a four-yard game. That brings up second and six, where he's brought down by number 50, Jeff Clark. They brought, the, uh, they brought their widespread offense and two receivers on each side, spreading out the Diablo defense, get him, getting them those, those critical yards they need to get the first down. And there's a look at that El Toro offensive line, which has been doing such a fine job so far this evening. Well, you got to mention them. Kevin Adams, Russell Miller, Chad Heiser, David Cottrell, and Jason Walker. And so far, they've been blocking real well and giving the quarterback, Steve Stenstrom, all kinds of time to throw the football. Brings up a second and sixth situation from their own 49-yard line. It's a fake, he rolls to his right, he's got some time, looks sideline, hits his man, down at the 40, 35, and trips out of bounds at the 34-yard line as he goes to his favorite target, Nemeth. He really, he really uh, staged that one well. He, he was going to get rushed, he was getting rushed, the pressure was on, and he dumped it off to David Nemeth. We do have an injured player on the field. Here is the replay. Nemeth goes right up the sideline. can't tell exactly who the player is his back has turned away from us 
There is an injury on the field. We do have 2-10 remaining to play in the first half with your score, El Toro 7 and Mission Viejo 3. This is Dimension Cable Channel 10, bringing local community programming to South Orange County. This is Dimension Cable Channel 10, bringing local community programming to South Orange County. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium. Just two ten remaining to play in the first half with the score of the charges of El Toro 7 and the Diablos of Mission Viejo 3. We do have an injured player who are waiting for the report on that. Just a quick stat before we talk about the first half so far, Paul. Quarterback Steve Stenstrom for El Toro 7 of 9, 103 yards in the touchdown pass, and he's just played a nearly flawless first half. Sure has. I think the, uh, the last two games he's been taken out in replace of Rob Johnson late in the second half. But uh, I think he's come around tonight. He's woken up really well. So far from the first half of what you've seen, what has surprised you? Well, I think the, uh, the time of possession has really surprised me. Mission Viejo, normally when they get the ball, they, they score. But, uh, of course, Kopp has, has thrown two interceptions. And the injured player being, being brought off the field is number 75, Mike Madero, the big defensive Boy. lineman, 5'10", 220-pound junior. It's like a left ankle there. Yep, and it takes two guys to bring him off the field. Mission Viejo, so far you take a look. Meanwhile, quarterback Troy Kopp from Mission Viejo, he's 5'10 of 82 yards, but the key two INTs equaling his season total entering right. tonight. Well, this is league play, and this is where it all happens right here. This is where it counts. El Toro with the ball. First down and 10 from the, from the Diablo 33-yard line. Stenstrom calls the signals. The gift straight up the middle. Of the middle. To the 25, the 20, the 15, go in, the 10, go the 5. In. Touchdown, El Toro. Oh, that was wide open. And Nemeth is just having quite a first half, and the Chargers take a 13-3 lead. 2.03 remaining to play, first half. You could see that develop. Nemeth broke into the secondary before they could close the gap. And his speed, he's a big guy, but his speed, just watch him break through. You look at his eye, you can almost see his eyes where he's looking to go for that goal line. And the key is he's got the legs up high. He's driving, and he runs 33 yards for a touchdown. Four, Four plays, 66 yards, and, and only one minute and 40 seconds. Only taking 140 off goes. the clock. It's extra point time. Nemeth's kick is up, and it is good. So Nemeth has uh, run almost all the points on the board right. for him. He's kicked two extra points. He's ran for a touchdown, and he's accumulated eight of the 14 first half points for El Toro. As we have 203 remaining to play in the first half, your score, El Toro 14 and Mission Viejo 3. 
you know? Yeah, it's true. Sometimes I call and ask for her. My father said, your mother's at fine stores everywhere. Um, <laughs> So I bought this other watch, this other pink watch. It had a ballerina on it because it looked in the catalog, I swear, like the ballerina's legs told the time. And I kept thinking, 10 to 2, we're talking about some pain here. Something's wrong with you. It's MTV's new half hour comedy hour, Tuesdays on MTV. And welcome back. A kickoff by El Toro at the squibber and down by Mission Viejo at their own 33-yard line where they'll start off first and ten. Surprise, surprise, El Toro with a 14-3 first half lead. And if you just joined us, uh, Paul, why don't you just kind of sum up what's happened so well, far in this first half? Troy Coff, who don't, doesn't normally throw interception, has thrown two interceptions, which has resulted in 14 points for the scores. And... Uh, I don't think uh, Troy Koff should be thinking about those interceptions. He needs to play the type of football he's been playing all year. Right now, I'm sure Mike Rush has told him, just move the ball downfield. We still have plenty of time in this football game. First and 10, cut back to pass, looks for his man, hits him at the 40, 45, midfield, where Williams is finally out of bounds. They rule him out of bounds at his own 47-yard line. Damon Williams, he, they're really mixing up as well. They're both, both of these teams are utilizing their whole team exactly. You can see the throw to Damon Williams almost deflected there. And then he shoots for the first down marker and gets it. And a good play by Damon Williams to pick up the first down. That's a pickup of 14 yards. First and 10 for Mission Viejo. We've got 145 remaining first half. Mission Viejo to see if they can score a touchdown Exactle. before the end of the first half. Looking deep over the 21. middle. The catch, yes, the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown down for Mission Viejo, and they're right back in the ball Woo. game for Mission Viejo number 21, wide receiver John Baldelli. It almost looked like he was going to throw to Ekdahl and then broke up the middle to John Baldelli. John Baldelli coming up with a big catch, and right when you think El Toro is dominating this football game, Mission Viejo says, uh-uh, we're yep. number one in Orange County. We're going to show you what we're made of. They can do it fast, but they're still, they're still behind by, right now, what it looks like to be five points. And they strike real, real big. And we've got a penalty against El Toro, of course, is declined. It's a touchdown of 53-yard scoring strike going from quarterback Troy Kopp to receiver John Baldelli, and just like that, the score is 14-9 with 138 remaining to play in the first half. I don't think Troy Kopp was worrying a bit about those interceptions. He knows what he has to do. And he's just going to keep on passing, and you can tell it didn't affect his game. Not because he threw an interception in their last possession. He said, I've got to score the way we've scored all year long, and that's by the pass. Usually you get to Ekdahl, but here Baldelli gets wide open. And he comes in for the score. Cop now 7 of 12 for 126 yards. You know about the two INTs. If you just joined us, you don't know about the touchdown, bringing Mission Viejo right back in it. Last year, I think that might have bothered Troy Cop, but with all his varsity experience this year, he has come around. And I, he was very emotional last year, and as well, he's, he's been emotional this year, but he's done it in a positive way. Well, well, that's probably the difference between uh, being a junior and a senior. You gain a lot of experience your junior year, comes to the senior year, you know you're the captain, you know you've got to run the squad, you know you've got to push him, you've got to motivate him. And when you're down 14-3, that's exactly what he did to get his ball club right back into the contest. A timeout was called, and you've got to figure they've discussed trying to score the two points, because even if you get the extra point, you're still down by four. They want to get the two-pointer and get within the field goal, and with the yep. leg of Eric Ekdahl, you know if you get the two-pointer, you're right back in That's it. right, and these guys will not go for the tie. Neither team will go for a tie. They don't believe in that. The fans getting into it. It's put on your seatbelt time as Mission Viejo goes for the two-point conversion. They now work out a shotgun. And with that, Cop was able to, able to draw him off sides, and we'll just wait for the official call. It'll bring him a little bit closer, half the distance to the goal line. And I think what threw off El Toro was when Cop backed up into the shotgun formation. I don't think El Toro's seen that look from Mission I don't, They don't really see it from Mission Viejo. They normally see it from Capitol Valley. They're, they're, they have a, a history of doing that on fourth down or on the uh, close yard line to the goal line. They normally do that. And a timeout has been called by El Toro. 138 remaining to play in the first half with your score. El Toro 14 and Mission Viejo 9. As you can see, our fans, they've got a lot of fans here. Both sides are packed really nice. We even got him up on the grass overlooking the freeway over there. Yep, uh, right by the I-5 off La Paz Road. If you haven't 
shown up yet. We've got an exciting one. 138 remaining first half, 14 to 9. We've been talking about the offensive stats of Mission Viejo, but Nemeth for El Toro has been ripping up the field in this first half. He sure has. And one stat that I don't think really has hurt El Toro so far is the penalties. There are four penalties for 16 yards, and really it hasn't hurt them at all. No, it has not, and it's brought them right back in the game as Mission Viejo. You know, the team's number one rated. You're playing El Toro in a real strong rivalry in which there have been close games over the course of the years, and they know this is the time. You've got to buckle down. You've got to show what you're made of, and there's no doubt Mission Viejo did that on that last they drive. They sure did. They know, this, this game is going to be going like this most likely all the way through the second half. Yep, you can expect a real barn burner. Uh, some quick offensive stats. Cop 7 of 1,226 yards, two INTs, and a touchdown. Leading the way offensively uh, for El Toro is Nemeth. He's had 11 rushes for 96 yards and a touchdown. And right now we've got a little bit of talking going on the yeah, sideline. Coach Johnson will let him know what he thinks of the call, without a doubt. And here they go for the two-point conversion. Set up two-man backfield receivers wide to either side. Cop on the run, in. and he has stopped short. The El Toro defense comes up big, stopping them from the two-point conversion, and that can turn into the big, big play of this big, Yes, yes. Uh, you, you, you always have to question the call. Troy Cobb kept it. He's a good running quarterback, and normally he would score off something like that, but they're playing against El Toro, a totally different team. Now, were you surprised that Cobb ran with the football? Wouldn't you think give it to your shorthanded man, Eric I've seen I've seen him run it quite often, and normally he does pick up what he needs to pick up. You've got to think, hey, exxon has been having a good game, and he can get in there. 138 remaining to play in the first half. The score, El Toro 14 and Mission Viejo 9. I'm Axel Foley, Beverly Hills Billy Inspector. I'm from the Rap Coalition of America. Just what is Eddie Murphy? Uh, I'm a fool cleaner. No, he's the star. Hey! Of a Showtime exclusive you won't see on HBO or Cinemax. Well, it is pretty funny. Eddie Murphy stars in Beverly Hills Cop 2, exclusively on Showtime. <laughs> Something's wrong. Eddie Murphy's good for a laugh. Beverly Hills Cop 2, exclusively on Showtime. Great. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium. A look at the Diablos after they scored to creep within five. But what you don't know is they went for the two-point conversion and fouled, and what could have been a three-point game is it a five-point game. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like I said before, before they tried the uh, the two-point conversion, and these teams will not play for a tie. You know, they're they're rated. Michigan is rated number one. They want to stay number one, so they're going to go for that two-point conversion. So, so you agree with Mike Russ's strategy of go? Well, for the two I think points. that's gutsy football, and that's why you know they're winning so much this year. El Toro's got a gutsy football team. I think they would have done the same thing. I mean, so far the story has been El Toro scoring off of two Mission Viejo INTs. Meanwhile, on the other end, Mission Viejo striking back right after an El Toro score on the big touchdown pass from Troy Kopp to John Baldelli. That's right, and, and Mission Viejo will kick off from the El Toro Charger 45-yard line. You've got a, this ball will probably end up in the tennis courts for Eric Dekdahl. Yeah, well, there's a penalty assessed to El Toro moving the ball, which was after the play, so it gets assessed off of the kickoff, and the way Ekdahl's been kicking today, you can kiss that baby goodbye. Yeah, and Coach Johnson was not happy about that call, as you could tell earlier on the video. Well, so far they haven't been able to return anything anyway, so we'll start off at the 20-yard line. Ekdahl, Ooh, it's a little booter. He goes towards the sideline, picked up at the three-yard line, and he falls down at the five-yard right. line where El Toro will have the ball first and ten deep in their own territory. Falling down for the ball for El Toro is number five, Scott Tapa. I think that was a great call. Why not Why not kick it in there and get, and get them down close to their own goal line? Yep, well, Mission Viejo figures maybe if we could play some tough D and uh, cause a turnover, maybe get the ball back right. and get a quick score. Hey, it took about ten seconds for Troy Kopp to score on that TD. They sure came back real strong off of that El Toro score. And we'll see what El Toro decides to do with a minute 30 and ticking remaining to play in the first half. 14-9 the score. El Toro with the surprising five-point lead in this first half. Mission Viejo entering the game at 6-0. El Toro enters at 4-2. CIF league action always tough, and this game is no exception. First and 10 for El Toro. They've got the ball from their own five-yard line, set with a full backfield. And the give is to Nemeth, to the well. 10, the 15, and works his way down, check that, uh, about to the 11-yard line, where he's brought down by three Mission Viejo defenders. You know he's going to give it to David, David Nemeth. He's having a fantastic game. He's going to be the guy that's going to get him out inside, out of the 20-yard line there. Well, he's the guy who brings you down the field, and he'll be the guy who will bring you out of the hole. 
Nemeth right, Nemeth left. So he's proved to be, I mean, I knew the guy could play, but yeah. I think he's having the game of the season right now. It wouldn't surprise me if the Chargers threw the ball in a situation like this. 38 seconds in ticking first half, 14-9 El Toro lead. They have the football. Calling the signal, Steve Stenstrom. And he's just going to fall down and let time tick away, saying we've got the five-point lead, and we'll take that into That's the right. locker room. You see Coach Rush. Time keeps on ticking. We're at about 20 seconds, and that should be the last play of this first half. 14-9 El Toro lead. Been an interesting first half. Both offenses have been playing well and uh, the defense of Mission Viejo maybe not playing up to par. Well, that's, that's Mike Rush's uh, specialty there. As you can see, he's quite concerned. They're going to run it out and that's going to be the half. And we have completed the first half of play from Mission Viejo District Stadium with the score. The Chargers of El Toro 14 and the Diablos of Mission Viejo 9. We'll be back with our halftime festivities right after this. If you're tired of paying high department store prices for fine quality upholstered furniture, discover name brand furniture outlet in Mission Viejo. Your source for Orange County's largest selection of sofas, sleepers, recliners, and sectionals, all at prices you won't believe possible. Name brands like Stratford, Lane, Cavalier, Fairchild, People Lounger, and more. We can offer you the lowest possible prices because we buy special purchases of first quality overruns, cancellations, and overstocks direct from the manufacturer. And our low overhead allows us to pass the savings directly to you. Just listen to some of our satisfied customers. I buy my furniture at Name Brand Furniture Outlets because they have the best prices and the best quality. After looking everywhere, I walked in in five minutes, I found exactly what I wanted, and I couldn't believe how low the price was. They have top quality, big selection, and the best prices in town. Now, for a limited time only, mention this TV ad and receive free local delivery with any purchase of $500 or more at Name Brand Furniture Outlet on Geronimo near Alicia Parkway in Mission Viejo. When I was your age, television was called books. And this is a special book. What's it about? It's about this beautiful girl named Buttercup and her true love, Wesley. Since the invention of love, there have been seven truly great romances. Wesley and Buttercups was easily in the top three. Something wrong with you. See the Princess Bride this month on Showtime. The ball into A.C. Green, the Lakers with a two-point lead. First quarter, we've played two minutes. Now the ball bounced into Magic Johnson, posting up for the first time on pressure. Reaches back, slaps his hand away. Magic got an eight to A.C. He put into the air to Miami, jumped by Cooper to Magic. It's a four-on-three, Magic to middle man, dribble behind the back. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium where we're at halftime with your score, the Chargers of El Toro 14, the Diablos of Mission Viejo 9, and a bit of a first half upset, many would say. Take a look quickly at the first half stats. They go like this. Rushing Mission Viejo, 10 rushes for 41 yards. El Toro 17 for 103 yards, including a touchdown. Passing 126 by Mission Viejo, 169 by El Toro. The total offensive yards, 167 by Mission Viejo, 272 by El Toro. So they've really been moving the football. Both teams with eight first downs, the key. The two turnovers by Mission Viejo, both of have led to El Toro's scores. Quarterback sacks done by Mission Viejo. El Toro's Stenstrom was sacked once for seven yards. Mission Viejo got an early 3-0 lead off for a 38-yard field goal by Eric Ekdahl. El Toro bouncing back for 14 uh, points in the second quarter, uh, both coming off of turnovers by Mission Viejo. And then uh, Mission Viejo coming with a quick touchdown strike of 53 yards just before the first half. They failed on the two-point conversion. Meanwhile, rushing Agassi, one of three for Mission Viejo. Ekdahl, nine for 38. El Toro, the big man, Nemeth, 12 for 103. Maestas, three for 12. Passing cop of Mission Viejo, 7 of 12 for 126. One touchdown and two INTs. Stenstrom, 7 of 9 for 103 yards and one touchdown. And Paul, you've got the rest of the stats. In receiving, it was Ekdahl, two catches for 26 yards. Ball, John Baldelli, one catch for 63 yards. And, of course, that was that touchdown. Williams, two catches for 21 yards. Hayes, two catches for 49 yards. For El Toro, Drinkwater, one for 41 yards and that touchdown. Vivonia, Jason Vivonia, two catches for 24 yards. David Nemeth, one catch for 17 yards. Amayastas, two catches for 32 yards. It's kind of interesting because in the beginning of the game, we said whoever has, is going to have the ball the most is going to win this game. I told you that El Toro's defense was going to have to keep the Mission Bay 
Diablo's offense off the field, and so far they have done just that. They are leading in time of possession, and um, they're leading on the scoreboard. And Paul, right when I had said that you had actually made a mistake, you come back and you're exactly right on the way you saw the first half going. I think the two key factors to keep in control, number one is the possession of offense by El Toro. Number two, the two turnovers by Mission Viejo, both of them leading to El Toro's two scores and El Toro offense moving the ball well and also the El Toro defense doing a good job when they're out there on the field. They're controlling, they're controlling the Mission Viejo's passing game and a little bit of their running game, but so far that that touchdown, that was the, the passing touchdown for Mission Viejo. So they, they've done it, but they've only let down one time. You know, Nemeth uh, has been a good player all season long, but there's no doubt you've got to agree it's probably the best half of football that he's played all year long. And here come the Diablos of Mission Viejo out onto the field. They're down by five points. And I'm sure if you are uh, the players on Mission Viejo, I'm sure you kind of got a little chewed out by head coach Mike Rush. What was he telling his players in the locker room? I think they were just going back to their basics. They looked, probably looked back on what they've done all year. They've never been down like this, but um, they're not down that far. And, and Coach Rush, he is, a, he is a coach that the kids like. He's not somebody that uh, they don't like. They're going to listen to him, and they're going to come out and play some some decent football. I bet you they might even turn it around the second half. Now, meanwhile, if your head coach El Toro, uh, Bob Johnson, he's got his squad up by five points. Even though he's a confident coach, probably a little bit surprised his team does have the lead at the end of the first half. What are you telling your players in the locker room? Well, I think he's going to keep the intensity on, keep the do, uh, keeping them doing what, they're, they, they, what they have been doing. They've been, they've been uh, blocking really well for quarterback Steve Stenstrom. Their defense has been getting the turnovers like they, they intended on doing. There's a shot at head coach uh, Mike Rush, the eco-professor right now, trying to have his assets outweigh the liabilities. As they're down by five points. We're ready to start the second half of play. It will be El Toro kicking off to Mission Viejo. And we get the second half of play underway. It's a short kick. And it's picked up at the 12-yard line up to the 50, the 20. Trying to go outside to the 23, and he's dumped down at the 21-yard line. Jürgenmeier. Yep, on the return and brought down nicely. Some good coverage play on El Toro. Now, yeah. they've said uh, their special teams is a little weak, but so far they've been doing the job That's on special right. teams. Coach Johnson did point out that his defense, that his special teams were giving up some yards, but really so far tonight they haven't. They got, uh, they got Jürgenmeier to turn inside. And they just worked them down laterally instead of up the field. Nice tackle there. They most certainly did as we get the second half of play underway. Mission Viejo with the ball. First down and 10 yards to go. Cop gives the ball straight up the middle to Ekdal. Up to the 25, the 30, where he's brought down after a pickup of about eight yards. Mark, that's the way they started the ball game with Ekdal running the ball. It's going to be interesting to see if they do that now in the second half. Just remind you, tonight's game again is brought to you in part by Ballpark Pizza, home of the free throw. We accept any dollar off coupons, so come on by and receive the best pizza in Saddleback Valley. Pizza fever, catch it. <laughs> That's ballpark pizza for We've you. got the uh, league fever tonight. Yes, and it's second down and short for Mission Viejo, setting out of, the, out of the eye, up to Ekdal, up the middle, gets about a yard. That's just about it. Going to be a little short of the first down, and nope, it is a first down. It looks like that's what he's going to do, stick to his game plan. He, these guys know, the two coaches know the teams really well. It's almost like who's going to outguess the other, so Coach Russ is going to stick to his game plan. Well, and also right now, being down by five points, you want to get back into the ball game, so give it to your control man, Exol. Let right. him catch the ball, let him run with it, and at the same time, you know, get back into the ball game. Brings up a first down and 10 yards to go from their own 32-yard line. Cop calls it, fakes to the right side, passes on the run, and incomplete. Intended receiver for Mission Viejo is number five, but falling incomplete. Jonathan Hayes was the intended receiver, and you could see that. I mentioned earlier about Troy Cop's fake pitch. That time he faked pitch instead of handing off the multiple offense, he threw the ball. Faked right, went to the right-hand side using part of their heart series offense, which is open. It's just that he threw the ball the other way off of the timing pattern. Brings up second and long. Cop drop back. He's got time to throw. Looks over the middle to Hayes. He drops it, and he takes a hard, hard hit by El Toro defense. They're all over him, playing him like a blanket on the hit was number 33, Brian Hot. You almost can can see that those balls should have been caught. They were right in the hands of both receivers. Could be the, the third quarter jitters out there. Right in his hands right here. A little 
He should have caught the ball, actually. Well, I don't know about that. When you've got a big linebacker coming right in your face, that will kind of intimidate you a little bit. Just to remind you, our instant replays tonight are sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people of the name brand furniture outlet in Mission Viejo. So off of that drop pass, it's third down and long. You can expect the pass on this play by Mission Viejo. Troy got back to pass. He's got some time. Looks over the middle. Hits his man. X all first down. And more. Here he goes. 45 and brought down. It's a saving tackle by, by number Jason 22, Devonia. Jason Devonia. They break it open. Eric X all. He can strike at any time and almost right. struck for six on that play. That's, that's the man you want in this situation. I, I'm normally pretty tough on receivers in the sense of catching the ball. You're going to throw to Eric X all. He's going to catch the ball. And X all picks up 23 yards for another Diablo first down. And Mission Viejo just doing what they've done on offense all season long. Going to X all on the run going to him on the pass and suddenly moving down. Right. Troy Kopp has been putting the ball on the mark. Really, his offensive line is just giving him some great protection. Well, their offensive line averages 210 pounds, and in the second half of many games is when they'll get their teams tiring. The run, left side, Ekdahl goes to the outside. Hits to about the 41-yard line where he's brought down by four, maybe five El Toro right. defenders. Speaking of that offensive line, Coach Russ said that's the biggest offensive line, both on offense and defense, to, to say the defense, that they've had in a number of years. Taking a look at the senior quarterback, number 12, Troy Kopp, two INTs and a touchdown down in the first half. I'm sure he regrouped. He said, okay, oh, we're yeah. only down by five points. We come downfield and score a touchdown again. We've got the lead. The thing about Mission Viejo is, uh, in a sense, that they, they have the home field advantage here. They have more people on their side of the stands. That, that does pump them up a little bit. It certainly does, and they've got the ball. Second down and eight yards to go. Cop back to pass. He's got some time. Looks right side. Ekdahl off of his oh. hands and intercepted by El Faro. Scott Topo. Number five, Scott Topo, his second interception of the game. And that one, I don't know if you could call a good pass or a bad right. pass. Flipping off the hands of the receiver. And Topo, who was injured earlier in the game, coming back for two interceptions. Just when it looked like they were going to get going here, ball tips off Ekdahl's hands. He's a, it's a little overthrown. And then right into the arms of Scott Topo. Topo says, look what I found. Beautiful camera work there. Look at that. Number five's got five INTs on the season. And right when Mission Viejo is knocking on the door, El Toro comes up right. with a big play. Who makes the tackle and out of bounds, Eric Dickdahl. Keep in mind, every uh, turnover El Toro has caused so far, they've come back for a score. So let's see if they can strike again. First and 10 from their own 32 out of the I formation. Receivers wide to either side. The fake, Here's rolling right at Stenstrom. He's got some time, looking deep sideline, and it's incomplete. Good coverage by Mission Viejo. It was number two, Jeff Jurgemeyer, the 5'10", 185-pound senior. I think that's a that's a pass you might not see Steve Stenstrom throw next year after he gets his varsity experience. That was a basically a, probably a junior pass. Not The experience wasn't there. He, he could have probably thrown it out of bounds or got another receiver. It's probably the first mistake that we've seen him make right. all day. I mean, Heck he played it. an excellent first half in moving the charge of defense downfield. He sure did. But sometimes you got to remember, you're up by five, you've got the lead, you think things are going your way, and sometimes you might take them a little bit for granted. It's second down, 10 yards to go. Setting up with the spread defenses, Mission Viejo showing a six-man front. Out of the eye formation, receivers wide to either side. Stenstrom gives straight up the middle to Nemeth. He's down at about the 38-yard line, and when in doubt, go to the rock. That's right. Mission Viejo started off the second half doing what they want to do, controlling the ball. They're, they had it for two minutes and four seconds. It's going to be interesting to see how long El Toro will hold on to the ball. And, and what El Toro wants to do, they've got the lead, but at the same time, they want to move downfield. If you want to pass, Stenstrom's been doing well with that. If you want to go with the run, go with Nemeth. Right. He's been like a bull today. You're not going to win this game by five points. You're going to have to put some points on the board, and they know that as well. El Toro realizes that. They've averaged about four touchdowns touchdowns per game on the season they're halfway you know so if they keep on going they'll reach that mark it's third down we'll call it six yards to go calling the signals two receivers wide to the right they give it straight up the middle on the run to Maestris and he's going to come up short brought down by a couple of Mission Viejo defenders and with fourth down it looks like it's time to punt you wonder if they're going to punt here because uh, they, they didn't go for it the first time and they punted well, but I think we'll let, here I, they go. They're going to punt the ball. Well, Mission Viejo, I think, has in mind that El Toro has been known to throw a deceptive play or right. two on him. So. And then on that one play that they, they went for and they got first down, who knows what they'll do here. That's true. El Toro, two of four so far on fake plays. The first two, which worked, turned out to be big plays. The second two, which didn't work, really didn't hurt them, so it really didn't make right. much of a difference so far in the ball game. And right when we said oh, they were well. punting, well, we're wrong. They're going hey, how for it. about that? It's fourth, and we'll call it two yards to go. Three-man backfield. Stenstrom calls the signals. Mission Viejo's got everyone on the line of scrimmage. Trying to draw, try to draw them, them off sides. Yep. Good play. That was, I mean, you got to give it a shot. You're going you're gonna to punt the ball. 
gives the, gives the uh, offense a chance to see if they can draw him offside. Yep, so they took too much time, and look at it this way. If you draw him offside, you got a first down without snapping that's the ball. That's right, that's right. It didn't work, and now with fourth and long, I'm sure here comes in the punting team. The Mission Viejo defense does the job, and they're going to get the ball back. And that's what it's all about. And the time of possession was not that long, so the Diablo defense did do the job. For Mission Viejo, back seat number 18, J.J. Fortune, and number 35, Stoney Corbin. And back to punt will be El Toro. We have 7.40 remaining to play in the third quarter with the score, El Toro 14, Mission Viejo 9. The punt is away, and that's a good one. Chance for a return here. Yep. Fortune picks it up at the 28 to the 30 and out of bounds at about the 32, 33 yard line where Mission Viejo will start off first and 10. I think that you'll see that Mission Viejo will stick to the same game plan. I, I can expect that, that Troy Cobb knows that he threw one that he shouldn't have thrown a little bit too high to Eric Dechtoff, but they'll probably stick to what they've been doing. How important do you think it is to get the first score of the second half? Do you think that's going to determine this ball game? Well, I think in this game, as usual, whoever scores last is going to win. And if it stays 14 to 9, well, you're gonna, you know that the Diablo's got to come back and do the scoring. The simple art of mathematics. That's first, right. <laughs> first and 10 for the charge is at the 32-yard line. Cop gives the give to Ekdahl, 35, 40, brought down at the 41-yard line after a pickup of eight yards. There's that pitch where they work out of the I formation. Cop can keep the ball, which sometimes he does, or a pitch out to Eric Dekdahl. Ekdahl entered the game. You know he's passed the caught for a lot of yards, but running actually not that much, 185 yards. And tonight, right. though, he's been running the ball very, very well. He sure has. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much they use Jimmy Higashi now in the second half. Higashi, who's been a real good runner, has only picked up 12 yards so far in the first half. So we'll see what happens here. We've got second and short, working out of the eye formation. The give is to Ekdahl, up the middle to the 45, the 50, and brought down just around midfield, and Ekdahl was ready to break loose for six before, before a good tackle by El Toro. Before that play, he had 13 yards for 58, I mean, 13 carries for 58 yards, so he's having a good game, and Jason... I mean, David Nemeth has already gone over the 100-yard mark to 112 yards. Yep, and the replay by uh, the run by Ekdahl just running up the middle. He must have kicked off about three, four tackles before he was brought down. There's a look at the El Toro defense, which has done a very good job so far in this ball game. It's first and 10 for El Toro from their own 49-yard line. Top rolling left. He's got the ball. He's on the keeper. It's a midfield. 45, 40, 35, and he's finally out of bounds on a good run by quarterback Troy Kopp. He picks up 15 yards and another first down. Good run by Troy Kopp, but uh, just an excellent block by Eric Ekdahl, he took away the end on that play and allowed Cop to get upfield. And our stats man said that Tyler Suchman, or Suchman, our stats man, Ekdahl was 14 for 69 yards. And he's been running well, and he knew from the beginning that play was a run, and a couple of good blocks left Cop free. 15 yard pickup, first and 10 for Mission Viejo from the El Toro 35 yard line. They're Six moving the ball. 6 14 remaining, third quarter, 14 9. El Toro, if you just joined us, we're at Mission Viejo District Stadium. All time to pass for Kopp. He's looking Ekdahl. deep right side for Ekdahl. And he's got it down at the five-yard line. He was wide open. Super job by the offensive line. Gave Kopp a solid five seconds to look for a receiver. Oh, he had the time of day to do it. And it was what it was interesting. He was looking downfield and then threw underneath to Eric Dekdahl. And they caught the secondary off. They caught the secondary off for a 28-yard gain. And now Ekdahl, I mean, is an excellent receiver, and there's no way that you can guard him for five seconds. That's and right. the offensive line did a super job. The credit to me, that pass completion should go to, to the, the offensive five line. offensive linemen of Mission Viejo. That's right. Mark Bloom, Todd Milton, Pete Ashby, Sean Parks, and John Pergakes. The, and boy, the boys down to the pit. That's one name you're going to call a lot is Pete, Pete Ashby. He's done a fine job all year long. First and goal. They place the ball at the seven-yard line. Back to pass is Cop. He's Looking. got all day, and now he's under pressure, and he's sacked. The first sack of the night. El Toro on the sack. It's number 64 on the play for the El Toro defense. That's Kevin Adams, the 5'11", 215-pound junior, bringing Troy Kopp down to his knees. That's quite the uh, normal size for the El Toro, El Toro lineman, 215 pounds. Yep, and he's only a junior. Yep, assisting was number 65, Russell Miller. He's a senior, 6'1", 225-pounder. That takes him back to the 14-yard line, where it'll be second down and goal to go. Mission Viejo District Stadium approaching the five-minute mark in the third quarter. Got back to pass. He's under some pressure. There's Looks Ekdahl. deep over the middle of that. Ekdahl. What a lead. Almost great intercepted. play. And super coverage by number 22, Jason, Jason Devonia. Got in there. That's just an excellent play. Got in the face. Got in the face of Eric Ekdahl. 
Copp Tipping that ball away. Cop was back to pass, and all of a sudden pressure coming from the blind side had to release it, and some, a good play by Pavoni to break up the touchdown pass. Just, just when we mentioned the Diablos offensive line, we got to mention the, the El Toro's defensive line doing the job. There you go. They did the job putting the pressure last couple of plays, and it's going to bring up a third and long goal-to-go situation from the 14-yard line. Receivers wide to either side. Ekdal set up in the Z-back. Agashi, lone man in the backfield. Cop rolls left. Over the Ekdal middle. Looks for Ekdal. Broken up defensively by El Toro. Good play, and credit the coverage to number 30. Check that out. Number 83 for El Toro High. Mark Bryant breaking up that play. And Troy Aker was in on that play. I think he's the one who deflected the ball and got in there. For just an instant, Ekdal was wide open. Yep, but... And Kopp is 9 for 19 for 178 yards. He's having a good game with the yardage factor, but not the completion factor in the sense of touchdown. And this will be about a 31-yard field goal for Eric Ekdal. And we've got a timeout being called by Mission Viejo with 4.54 remaining to play in the first half. Your score, El Toro 14 and Mission Viejo 9. It's your chance to make a big hit with the whole family of Ballpark Pizza. Ball pizza invites you to try the world's best pizza, delicious sandwiches, and the original sports theme restaurant caters to teams and sports fans of all ages who settle for only the best food and service. Hi, I'm Scott of the Los Angeles Lakers. Ballpark Pizza is the best pizza I've ever had. Now open in Town Center, Laguna Niguel. Pizza Fever, Cat Park Pizza. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. Put us to the test. Come in and see how much you can save. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium. It's field goal time for Mission Viejo. 454 remaining third quarter. 14-9. El Toro leads it. Mission Viejo is trying to cut that deficit as Eric Ekdahl will be approaching, we'll call it a 30, 31-yard field goal coming up. Ekdahl kicked one earlier, trying to kick his second field goal. The kick is up, and it is right through the upright. It's good, and we've got ourselves a 14-12 game. And that's that first score, and if they would have scored that two-point conversion, we would have a tie ball game. Yep, so as I said, that play was a real big one in the game because if they had gotten that, we'd have ourselves a tie. Instead, it's a 14-12 El Toro lead. You see a good shot of Eric Dekdahl. He does so much. Kicks the field goal, kicks the, kicks the extra point, kicks the kickoff, runs the ball, I know, catches he must the be, ball. He must be tired by the end of the game. Third quarter score, El Toro 14, Mission Viejo 12. As the Diablos come right back with a field goal of Eric Ekdahl, he's rushed for 60 yards, and he's gone for about 60 yards. It's been a good after, good evening for Eric Ekdahl, who after kicking the field goal will now kick the ball off for Mission Viejo. Marcos, eight plays, 68 yards, and two minutes and 39 seconds for that field goal. Moving the ball down pretty quickly. If they you sure notice, are. If you notice, a lot of their drives don't take much time off the no, clock. No, this game is moving real fast. Sure is. 450 remaining third quarter, 14-12. Eric Dahl kicks it off as a line drive squibber. Off the helmet. Yep, and going towards the sideline, picked up at the 20 and out of bounds at the 22-yard line for El Toro. That was number 27, Kevin Rowe. Kevin had that ball hit him right in the face mask and batted outside. Yeah, just, Luckily. To, just to mention that we're talking about the play of Eric Ekdahl. I mean, football, he's an excellent player, but that's not even his main sport. No, he's into soccer, which uh, he loves to play, and then baseball is his main sport. He hopes to get a scholarship in baseball to some school right here in California. And then baseball is definitely a deep... A I'd imagine, can't imagine how well he plays baseball if <laughs> it's better than football because he's an excellent player. Back to the football game, El Toro first and 10 from their own 22 out of the eye formation. Steve Stenstrom at quarterback out there. The give is to Nemeth and he has met right at the line. Excellent play by combination number 30, John Clapper, and number 76, Mark Sliman. Driving him back. Excellent play by Clapper and Sliman doubling up. And why don't you call it on the replay? Well, you can see Dustin got right in there. And brought down for Well, he really brought him down nice. Yep, our instant replays tonight are sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people at the name brand furniture outlet in Mission Viejo. And he was sent almost clear through Mission Viejo off of that tackle. El Toro. tackle. El Toro's got the ball at second and long as they lost yardage on that play at the 21-yard line. It's a fake. 
They yeah. give the reverse to Bavonia. He's passing to Drinkwater, and oh. it's off his hands at the 42. And you've got to rule that ball catchable. That was a catchable ball. It, it, st it stayed up there a long time. Stoney Corbin on the play, number 35. We've been calling his name a lot, sure and only have. calling it due to the good defensive play. That's right, he's had a great game so far. And speaking of a great game, at the end of the game, we're going to be announcing the offense and defensive player, and it's sponsored by Saren's Chiropractic. $50 will go to the school of the chosen player, $50 each for each player, so a total of $100. A number of players playing well so far. We don't know at this point in time who it will be. It'll probably have to do with who wins this football That's game. That's right. Stick around for the end of the game for that. Brings up third and long situation. Stenstrom working out of the eye formation. Receivers wide either side. Back to pass under heavy pressure over the middle. Almost intercepted and complete. Mark, that was anybody's ball there. Yep, but I'll tell you, Stenstrom had to do something with it because he had two big men coming at him in the way of number 76, Mark Slyman, and number 48, Tim Bouchard. He's got to credit the Diablos defense, Mike Rush. Looks like he probably talked to the Diablos defense in the first half. And if there's a turning point in this game, we could be seeing it right here. That's right. Mission Viejo scoring off their last possession, and now the defense coming right out of the field and really taking it to El Toro. And Stoney Corbin will be back to return the kick. Drinkwater is standing on his own eight-yard line. He'll be punting it away for the charges of El Toro High. The kick is away, and it's a pretty good one end over end. Back is Fortune at the 35-yard line, and he's under heavy-duty pressure going left side at the 30, going sideline and down at the 34-yard line. Good coverage by El Toro. Good coverage, definitely, and J.J. Fortune did a good job of not losing any yards on that. He went laterally and tried to get out of bounds. And he did the most of it, and the fortunes for J.J. were not <laughs> that good. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be first and 10 for Mission Viejo. They'll be starting from their own 34-yard line. We've got 337 remaining third quarter. If you just joined us, we're at Mission Viejo district stadium with a surprise el toro leading crosstown rival mission viejo 14 to 12. as you can tell they, they have stoney corbin and jj fortune back on the on the punts and jj fortune returned a really nice punt to set up a touchdown last week against Capistrano Valley. And that was a nice punt to end over end by Drinkwater. First and ten for Mission Viejo. Cops got time. Hit that goal at the 38. He's brought down quickly. Good defensive play by number 22, Jason Bavonia. On that play, ekdahl has got two really good receivers out there. He's got number 21, John Baladelli and Eric Dekdahl. He's picking the two, as you can tell. Throws underneath to Eric Dekdahl. But Bavonia is all over him and makes a real good defensive play. I mean, that's one-on-one -on -one coverage against Ekdahl and almost caused the fumble. Uh, and did a nice job of holding on to the ball. He most certainly did. So that's, that's, I'm sorry, that's a strong point of El Toro. Their secondary is just right on top of things. We're going to wait for the call. Looks like it's a penalty against Mission Viejo. And let's wait for the official call. It's holding, and you know it was on the old offensive line. Whoever, they, whoever it is right now is going to very quietly <laughs> go back into that huddle. But they do a good job. There's Troy Kopp getting signals from the sideline and Mike Rush. And that's the first penalty of the game against Mission Viejo. And you were speaking of baseball. Troy Kopp is one excellent baseball player himself. And he's a quarterback, probably a shortstop. Or center <laughs> fielder, I guess. I think he's a pitcher. Okay, usually the leaders are in those types of positions. Second and long, the give up the middle to Ekdahl. So and Nagashi, Nagashi. Nagashi, he gets about a yard or two. Ekdahl gets it so often, you figure right. any time they run, he's got the ball. That's one surprise. I, I thought they might hand off the ball more to Jimmy Higashi. You might see that they're going to try to mix it up a little bit more. Uh, well, Ogashi, I mean, 467 yards entering the game on the ground. He's been very, very quiet tonight, and I think that's been a surprise. Yes. he. The first game this season, he had a heck of a game, and uh, he really came out and showed the Diablo fans that he is a football player indeed. Meanwhile, for El Toro, it's an 18-yard situation coming up for them on second down, and we'll see what they decide to do. Receivers wide to either side. Cop rolling to his right. Looks to pass and hits his man and a good catch by number five, Jonathan Hayes, who has been having a real good evening. That was a good catch and as well as a good pass. 5'9", 150, not big by any means on any level, but he's been showing some good speed, catching the ball and going out of bounds. He almost reminded me of Jay Schrader rolling out that far and throwing on the run like that. Jay Schrader, Schrader. quite a comparison made. You heard it. You saw it here on Dimension Cable Vision made by Paul Higgins. We've got 2.13 remaining to play, third quarter. The score, El Toro 14 and Mission Viejo 12. They've got a third down situation coming up. We'll call it five yards. Troy Kopp brings his team out. Ekdahl is set up to the left-hand side. Two receivers set up over there. Kopp straight back to pass. He's under oh. some pressure, and he still gets the ball. Oh, my God. Completes it to Ekdahl on the first down. Boy, that, that was some play. Talking about keeping thy composure. Yes, he sure did. 
He in the in the pros they probably would have whipped him down. But that would have that would have been in the grass. But that is one of the rule differences between the pros and the high school game, in which it should be, I think. Okay, and, and once again, you <laughs> saw it here, made by Paul Higgins. Some excellent pressure was made on El Toro High. It was number 65, Russell Miller, but. Uh, the strengthening and conditioning of the Mission Viejo team was able to keep Kappa there for an extra couple of seconds. They've got the ball offensively. Give it to Exal up to midfield. Breaks loose to the 45 and down to the 44-yard line. We've also got a penalty flag, and we'll have to wait for the call. And you saw in that play what Troy Kopp can do. He faked the inside handoff to Jimmy Higachi. He could have handed it off. I'm sure the play was to go to Eric Dekdahl, and he did a fine job of doing that. Ekdahl goes by one. Runs two. over Jimmy Higashi. Yeah, actually. runs over Higashi, and you saw the flag thrown. Can't tell who it is, uh, who it is it on. It looks like it might probably be a hold in that type of situation where you've got the open field right. ahead of you. And that's what it looks like it's going to be. So the second penalty of the game on Mission Viejo, both of them on drives where you thought they were going to move downfield, and the penalty hurt them the first time. We'll see how they respond this it's time. Gonna be a, it's going to be a tough one. Now, they, uh, it's gonna, look, look, we'll have to see if Mission Viejo creeps up. And it's going to bring up a long situation for Mission Viejo. They'll have the ball, Troy Kopp, in his set. Receivers wide to either side. Wide to the right, John Baldelli, who caught that touchdown pass earlier to the left side. Hayes set up in the I formation, Nagashi and Ekdahl. Back to pass, he's got all day, jumps it off to Ekdahl to 35, 40, and brought down hard at the 44-yard line. Troy Kopp is utilizing Eric Dechtal quite often. You've got to wonder when he might uh, surprise somebody and go back to John Baldelli like they did in the first half. Yeah, there's a look at the senior Eric Dechtal, number 34, running back senior. We've talked about how he does it all, uh, running, catching the ball, kicking field goals, and kicking the ball off. Of course, Michigan has got their eyes on that CIF championship. They got to get by El Toro, but they did it last in 1981. Okay, meanwhile, El Toro is the two-time defending CIF champ, including 1986 when they were state champs. They got a tradition of football. Cop with the ball, he's rolling right. Can't find the receiver, now goes deep down, and the catch made at the 30, 25, 20, cuts back, he might go all the way, 15, 10, 5, and in for a touchdown, John Baldelli with yet another big catch, and Mission Viejo has taken the lead, trying Cop to number 21, John Baldelli. I think it was that, uh, I don't know if they heard me from up here calling the play or not, but that fake pump, to Eric Dekdahl, and they dumped it off to John Baldelli for a second touchdown. They do what they have to do to get in the end zone. And John Baldelli has become the big play man for the Diablos this evening as they now take the lead with just 43 seconds remaining to play in quarter number three. He does what he does best when he gets the hands on the ball. He can cut out field. Look at him just cuts by all the receivers as his eyes are on the end zone there. And, and off to the races is right. number 21, John Baldelli. All 5'9", 150 of them. The extra point is up by Eric Ekdahl. It is up and it is good. Mission Viejo retakes the lead. We've got 43 seconds remaining in the first half with your score. Mission Viejo 19 and El Toro 14. A top-secret experiment goes berserk. I'm possessed! Sending a miniature Dennis Quaid on a round-trip excursion through Martin Short. You are seeing parts of my body that I will never get to see. Yeah, believe me, you're not missing all that much. Male bonding takes on a whole new meaning with inner space. Something wrong. Dennis Quaid is in Martin Short in Inner Space this month on HBO. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. We offer genuine savings without gimmicks. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium. There's the man, number 21, John Baldelli, who just caught a 56-yard touchdown pass from Troy Kopp giving Mission Viejo the lead. It was six plays going 65 yards, 3.08 off the clock. Cop now 13 of 23, 256 yards, and two touchdowns. Ekdahl kicks it away and booms it out of the end zone. El Toro will start first and 10 from their own 20. We were talking about a turning point in the game off of that field goal. That and then the coming back playing good defense, and they just struck back offensively. And no doubt, that's this right. point in time, that's a turning point in the game. It's going to be interesting to see if El Toro can reverse the situation now. It's they're the character of their ball team is really going to be seen right now down behind. We've got just 43 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter. The story has been Troy Kopp has thrown for two touchdown passes. 
And there's been a couple of field goals by Eric Ekdahl. And that's what's given Mission Viejo the five-point lead. First and ten for El Toro from their own 20. Receivers wide to both sides. Have four receivers going out on the pattern. Just one man in the backfield. Five-man front for Mission Viejo. The run is straight up the middle for a couple of yards, and that's it. The Mission Viejo defense coming up big will bring up second and long. That's how El Toro spreads out their offense. They have those two receivers on each side, like Coach Johnson said they do, and allows them to run up the middle and get those early yards when they're backed up into the end zone area. Not picking up much on that play, though. Mission Viejo defense has definitely got to be psyched. They are well-rested as uh, the offense has been on the field for much of the third quarter. That's right. One of their finest offensive linemen is Russell Miller for El Toro, and he's doing a nice job. And it's a five-man front being thrown by Mission Viejo, set out of the I formation. Receivers wide to either side. Stenstrom fakes the run, goes to the pass, and not even close to his receiver, Nemeth. I don't know if there was a mistiming on the pattern or a wrong pattern thrown, but it's incomplete pass. He was wide open. I think he was just felt the pressure, like you said. There's a look at the Mission Viejo sideline, and this game has it changed drastically after an early 14-3 lead by El Toro. Uh, Mission Viejo has struck back for 16 unanswered points. This is where Mission Viejo is really tough as we, co as we come out to the uh, end of the third quarter. At the end of the third quarter, your score from Mission Viejo District Stadium is Mission Viejo 19 and El Toro 14. <laughs> Len Dawson and Nick Bonacati for in-depth analysis of every game every week on HBO's Inside the NFL. Something Inside the NFL covers every game every week only on HBO. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by name brand furniture outlet in Mission Viejo. Put us to the test. Come in and see how much you can save. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium. As the fortunes of Mission Viejo have turned around, they've got a 19-14 lead as we enter quarter number four. A welcome to Mention Cable Sports fourth quarter. El Toro's got the ball. It's a third down and sixth situation for the Chargers. Set out of the I formation. Receiver set up wide to the right side. Stenstrom back to pass. He's got Sean some time. Water long. He's looking deep over the middle, and it's <laughs> knocked down. Good defensive play by Mission Viejo. It's number 10, Bill Denny, breaking things up. Eddie, we've seen some great plays by both defensive backs this game, and that was just an excellent. Maybe we'll get a replay on that one just to show you the diving deflection. Speaking of replay, here it is. Nice, nicely thrown ball. You couldn't have thrown the ball any better. And it was one-on-one -on -one with drink water and broken up beautifully. Just to remind you, our instant replays tonight are sponsored by Don Jeffries and the people at Main Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. It's time for punch on Drinkwater, standing back on his nine-yard line. Mission Viejo return men set up at the 40 and 45-yard line. The punch is up, end over end, fair catch call for, and Mission Viejo will start off first and ten from their own 38-yard line as Stoney Corbin calls for a fair catch. Mark, earlier in the game, or before the game, I said time of possession would be the key for Mission Viejo. As long as their offense is on the field, I think they're going to win the ball game in the third quarter. 8-27, the Mission Viejo is 3-33. You've got to credit their offense uh, for keeping the ball on the field as long as they did, and their defense for stopping the Chargers. And that was indeed uh, typical uh, of Mission Viejo, what they've really done yes. all year long. Whatever Mike Rush said at halftime, it sure worked. This is very typical of their style of play. First and 10 for Mission Viejo from their own 38-yard line. Set up the two-man backfield. The give is to Agashi up the middle to the 40, to the 41-yard line. Pick up the three. So Agashi picking up some stats. At the same time with the lead, you can start killing that clock. You know what's neat about Jimmy Agashi is that he is so small. You'd almost think he stopped at the, at the where the ball was marked in the, on, the, on the snap. But he's got such quick feet, and he's low to the ground, and he does move up the field without even you knowing it. Now with the lead by Mission Viejo, the cheerleaders have got a lot to cheer about here at Mission Viejo District Stadium. We've got a sellout crowd here. we got 5,000 on hand, and they're watching a real good one. And we're glad to bring it to you on Dimension Gable Sports. Cop with the ball. Back to pass, looks over the middle, and it's incomplete. Good defensive play by El Toro. It Brian was Haas got in there for that. Number 33, Brian Haas breaking that up. I think that uh, this game has been centered around the defensive backs making some nice deflections. 
It has been. The D-backs have done a good job, and they've been well tested this evening. And when they're and when they're burned, they feel bad, obviously. But when they get in for a play like that, it's something to uh, congratulate them on. Well, the D-back position is no guts, no glory. That's right. And your your tail is on the line with every long pass. Yep. Just remind you, Dimension Cable Sports will be bringing you a couple of games in two weeks. It'll be the Sam El Toro Chargers against Capo Valley, and the week after that, it will be Capo Valley against San Clemente. So plenty of football action on High School Football 88 on Dimension Cable Sports. Cop on the run, looking for the pass, hits Ekdahl, and they're gonna rule it incomplete as Cop took a hard shot by a couple of El Toro D-backs. Uh, Jason Bavonia, along with number 24, Troy Acker. Cop took a hard shot, but Ekdahl was covered really well. He had a chance to catch that ball, but you can't, you can't say anything negative about Eric Ekdahl. Looks like he's limping a little bit there. Well, he just took a hard shot by two defensive backs when they come from behind you when you're trying to concentrate uh, catching that ball. And then he takes a hard hit. Now he's back in punt formation, standing on his own 29-yard line. Back deep for El Toro. There's st receivers standing back on around their 25-yard line. The snap a little high, but Ekdahl collects it, punts it. It's up, end over end. Not a great punt, but a good punt. Back at the 25-yard line to the 30. And brought down at the 35-yard line on the return by number 21, Sean Drinkwater. Sean Drinkwater really got some nice yards on that. When you thought he was going to be down, he snuck up right up the middle. You know, you've, we've been talking about the all-purpose of Ekdahl, but let's talk about Drinkwater. You know, he returns kickoff. That's right. Uh, you know, he does the job as a wide receiver, and he's really shown us his athletic ability with some of the catches he's made this evening. Well, he's been around for three good years and been on those two uh, football teams that have been champions, so he knows what it feels like to win. Stenstrom starts things off, first and 10 for the Chargers from their own 35-yard line from the I formation. The kid like is to them if he fumbles loose ball. Let's see who's got Still. a bad scramble. And it looks like El Toro has recovered. A big loss on the play. Nemeth, it just looked like, just never had full control of that football. It's kind of, it seems to me that El Toro looks a little bit flat. They're, they're playing aggressive, but they do look a little flat. Actually, that was Danny Maestas, and he never had control. And a loose, mad scramble finally picked up by the quarterback, Steve Stenstrom. That was a smart play by Steve Stenstrom just to fall on the ball. And that was a loss of nine yards. Brings up second and 19, 10 5 remaining to play fourth quarter. If you just joined us, Mission Viejo 19, El Toro 14. El Toro with the ball in the white. Mission Viejo on defense in the red. Stenstrom goes right side to Pavonia. He makes the catch at the 30. Almost breaks it loose. Brought down at the 32-yard line on a good tackle by number 48, Ten Bouchard. You almost knew they were going to pass on that play. They had drink water far left and Pavonia far right. That was a risky pass because the uh, defenders were right there. As you can see, he throws, throws laterally. And whenever you do that, the guy can cut in easily for an interception and go all the way. And we mentioned Penn Bouchon on the tackle. Also helping out was number two, Jeff Jergermeyer. And El Toro will come out of the set. It brings up a third down and, uh, and short situation for El Toro. They call the signals. Two receivers set up to the left side, two to the right. Looking to pass in this situation. Goes looking on. deep down the right side for Bo Halley, and he can't make it. Good defense by both Jeff Jergermeyer and number 43, Bryce Williams through just a little bit too far out there, but you've got to compliment Steve. He's really hung in there when the defense is uh, basically almost stacked him whenever he's going back to pass. Yeah, he's had some pressure put on him in the second half, and the El Toro offensive line, which did such a fine job, I think is kind of getting a little tired, yeah. and it's not that they're not doing the job. It's just that Mission Viejo's got such a big front line there. They're going to wear you down as the game goes on. El Toro's going to need a break to get in this game. You're going to maybe need a fumble on this uh on this punt return, they're going to need something, an interception like they have in the first half. And standing back to punt is Drinkwater. He's standing on his own 18-yard line. The punt is up. Not a good one. Pretty short. And it does take an El Toro bounce. And they'll just let it roll, and it'll be first and 10 for Mission Viejo from their own 31-yard line. 8.59 remaining to play in the fourth quarter. Your score, Mission Viejo 19, El Toro 14. Angeles Lakers, league MVP Michael Air Jordan, Larry Bird and the Celtics. Tuesday and Friday night NBA returns to the Superstation November 1st. The world's greatest athletes begin their quest to decide who is the best. Tuesday and Friday night NBA on the Superstation. Something's wrong with you. NBA basketball, Tuesday and Friday night starting in November on TBS. Welcome back, Mission Viejo District Stadium, fourth quarter, first and ten. Ekdahl on McGiff goes up to about the 37-yard line where he's brought down by three players. It will bring up second down situation. 
It almost looked like that Eric was going to stop and pass that ball. I don't know if he was having a hard time having a hard time getting the handoff, but it almost looked like he was going to stop and throw the ball. You know he can throw the ball. He's done it. He did it to uh, in the uh, Fountain Valley game. He threw back to Troy Cop for a touchdown. Anything is possible. A look at the Mission Viejo sideline with Mike Rush, who has really done a fine coaching job in the oh, second half. Oh, they sure are. The, bo both these coaches have done a, just a great job this game, which they normally do. Second down, four yards to go for Mission Viejo. The Diablos have got the football and the lead. Cop on the run. He's going to take it and down at the 41-yard line as he takes a hard hit on the defense. Making the play is number 23, Mike Miller. That's another example of the multiple offense that Coach Rush does. He could have um, he could have pitched the ball. Troy Cop could have pitched the ball. Jimmy Higashi, but he chose to take it upfield himself, and he he merely nearly got the first down. And I and I think it's either it's going to be close to a first down, so a referee timeout is called. 7:54 remaining to play in the ball game. Your score is uh, Mission Viejo 19 and El Toro 14. <laughs> This is Dimension Cable Channel 10, bringing local community programming to South Orange County. Welcome back, Mission Viejo District Stadium. It's third and one. What can we expect to see here, Paul? I, I think that uh, Eric, I mean, I'm sorry, I think that Troy Kopp will probably do a quarterback sneak on this. Let's see what happens. Kopp calls the signals. He goes over. And I don't know if he's got the first down. El Toro stacked him up pretty good. It's going to be close. It looks like he got the first down. He only needed about about six inches, and I think he did get it. They're going to, looks like they're going to measure it. Uh, no, they're, I don't even think they're going to measure it. First down for Mission Viejo. 7.44 remaining fourth quarter, 19-14 Mission Viejo lead. Not to mention again for everyone to stick around at the end of the game, we're going to have the Sarens Chiropractic players of the game, both offense and defense. Sarens Chiro Chiropractic is donating, donating $50 for each player to the schools. Mission Viejo's got the ball first and 10 from their own 41-yard line. Cop calls the signals, two-man backfield, receiver in motion. The give is to Ekdahl, he cuts right side up to the 44-yard line. And right here is where you're going to see El, uh, Mission Viejo take as much time off the clock as possible and gain as much yards as possible. Yeah, we do have an injured player. Jeff Lott is down, and it's kind of ironic because El Toro has had a tough time with injuries this year. I was talking to Dr. Mark Lagom, as you'll see him come into your pitcher with the hat on. He's been with El Toro for 14 years, Dr. Mark Lagom has, and uh, he said that during the course of the season he has seen so many injuries, I think it's probably hampered the El Toro Chargers more than anything else. And any time you see a player go down like that, it's always a little scary, especially when you immediately have got five people rushing to him, you know something might be wrong. It's interesting you say that because also, from the, from the words of Dr. Uh, Lagome, I was talking to him earlier because he says the kids, it's really, it's really interesting when they do get hurt, sometimes they panic really bad out there, and he goes out there and he, and he finds out what's wrong. But he says sometimes they almost think it's the end of the world, and you can understand you've got some guy that's 215 pounds nailing you. You're going you're gonna to hope, hopefully uh, come out of it okay. And right now, the full house here at Mission Viejo District Stadium, who has been enjoying this game a little quiet. You never like to see a player get hurt, and you always hope that he's okay. Another thing is interesting about high school football is that they don't require to have any any ambulance here for the players. If they if a player does get hurt, they arrange the the paramedics to come in, but they don't require them to be on the field at all at all times. I, I think that's something maybe that they need to work on because if a player is hurt badly, I mean, the difference between having an ambulance here and an ambulance there sometimes could be a big difference when there's a serious injury. Exactly, especially when you've got maybe like a head injury or, or a bad knee or shoulder injury, which are the, a lot of common injuries for the uh, football players nowadays. And they, they are, what's kind of interesting is that the pads these guys are wearing nowadays, they are protecting the players so well that the, the players just go after the hard hits and they go after the hard tackles. And that obviously results in some injuries because they, they're using their head a lot more and, and they uh, basically they're trying to protect themselves, but they're, they're using their gear to, to do a number on the other team. And years ago, when the, when the helmets did come out, that, uh, back in the 60s and early 70s, when the very good helmets came out, the players were getting hit, hurt more often because they were using their heads more often. Well, we've got a minute. Some of the key stats so far in the game. Eric Ekthal, 17 rushes, 78 yards. 
Nemeth, who's had a fine ball game, 17 rush, 118 yards. So the teams have been running as well as passing. Kopp has thrown for two touchdowns, three interceptions, though. Only entered the game with two. Now he's got five on the year. It's interesting. You, you know, even though you've got the lead, uh, what's your what's going through the minds of Kopp, you know, having a game where he's thrown three INT? Well, you know, when you get in a league play, you're going you're gonna to do some things that you don't normally do in preseason. This is where it counts. Troy knows that uh, he'll, he's going to throw more interceptions during the year, and so will Steve Stenstrom, but he'll hang in there. Both quarterbacks will hang in there, and I'm sure that it's not going to phase him. He's going to have to throw the ball because that's their multiple offense. And some good news to see Jeff Lott is getting off the field under his own power, probably just had the wind knocked yeah, out of him. That scares the heck out of you, though. Um, I love, I love you, my darling. Can you tell? the time off the clock at six and a half minutes and ticking all mission viejo really needs to do at this point is ball control certainly at least another three-point field goal certainly would not hurt it for sure the diablo no and they're and they're they're doing just what they want to do right now is what you said controlling the ball the diablos number one in all of orange county at six and oh looking to keep that ranking against a tough game against el toro high Back to pass, going deep left side and just threw it out of pounds. Now that to me was an experienced uh, call yeah. by Kopp. He saw he couldn't hit his receiver, so he just said, I'm going to throw it out of bounds. I'm not yeah. going to make a bad pass. It almost looked like, though, Jonathan Hayes, he did have some room to run, and if the ball was thrown probably hard, he might have got the ball and got the ball upfield. But, but he, he did chose to make that senior decision as he is as a quarterback. The senior decision. And another senior back to punt is Eric Ekdahl standing on his own 30-yard line. He'll be punting away, and El Toro might be going for the block. They've only got drink water back uh, to receive this, so we'll see if they decide to go for the block. Ekdahl standing on his own 30. It's a good snap. The rush is on, and he just gets it away. Drinkwater picks it up at his own 20 on the run. Trying to cut back against the grain and nothing doing. Excellent special teams play led along the way by Mission Viejo, number 11, Jim Agashi and company. And Ryan Drake was in there for the, uh, for the, for the tackle as well. It's great special teams on that. Drinkwater did make a nice job of holding on to the ball. It almost, again, bounced over his head. The tricky soccer kick of Eric Dekdahl. And also remember, he barely got that away. El Toro had everybody oh, yeah. coming in on him, and they almost blocked him. Almost did. That, that, that was more of a quick, quick, quick. than anything else. Yeah, quick, quick kick. kick, and quick uh, kick. you credit to the quickness of Eric Dekdahl. Quick kick. Say that ten times. Quick back. kick. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth quarter action. We've got 5.42 remaining. And El Toro coming in to start things first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. So a long way to go. Uh, a field goal won't do it. It's got to nope. be a touchdown. Steve Stenstrom calls the signal. Gives off the left side to Nemeth up to about the 22. We'll call it a pickup of two. That brings up second down and eight yards to go. And I think what you're going to see is Nemeth maybe run the ball on first down. I think the uh, Chargers will come out and throw the ball. They have to throw. They've, they've got to get down the field. Well, they do need to throw, but on the other hand, you've still got over five minutes of play, so it's not like we've got a rush, we've got a score, but we want to make sure that we do steadily move the ball upfield. You're exactly right, but Coach Johnson is not a conservative coach, and he's going to go after it while he can. Second down, eight yards to go. Calling the signals is Stenstrom. He's got a full backfield, three men, with a five-man front by Mission Viejo, the fake. Stenstrom rolls to his left-hand side. He's under some pressure and an incomplete pass, and he got hit as he threw that ball, taking a hard hit by John Clapper, number 30, along with number 63, Big Pete Ashby. Mark, that was a nice fake by Steve Stenstrom, but, of course, the Diablo defense just swarmed him after that. 4.50 remaining, 19-14, Mission Viejo leads. It's going to be third and eight coming up for El Toro, and if you're head coach Bob Johnson, I mean, the bottom line is you need a first down. You need a first down. That's the first thing you got to get. Steve Stenstrom brings his team out of the huddle, set up in the I formation. Two receivers set up wide to the left-hand side. Now going in motion. Five-man front by Mission Viejo. Stenstrom, straight drop back. He's got some time. Looks first down territory and hits his man for El Toro. Sean Drinkwater. Sean Drinkwater making the reception. We heard his name a lot in the first half, but that's just his first reception of the second half. What's interesting is Sean Drinkwater used his experience to get out of bounds after he caught the ball. Then he knows he has to get the first down, but then he knows he has to stop the clock. It would have been, uh, been pretty tough for him to get up the field any more than he did, so he chose the wise thing. Yep, the key coming down the stretch is your experienced players coming up with the good plays as well as the smart plays. Throw to your veterans. First and ten for El Toro from their own 30-yard line out of the eye. Receivers wide to either side. Stenstrom calls the signals to give up the middle to about the 35-yard line, so a quick pickup of five yards as running the ball is Nemeth once again. There you go on your first down. You're going to give it to Nemeth to get that first five yards or so, and then probably you're going to go back to that pass, which they've been doing.
so far in the last couple plays successfully. Nemeth, I think, kind of represents the entire El Toro offense being kind of quiet after an excellent first half of play. It's interesting to see, but they're, they, it looks like they might have something going here, and with the time remaining on the clock, which is about four minutes and 15 seconds, they could come back and, and take a lead. Second down, six yards to go from their own 35-yard line. Stenstrom calls the signals. Quick drop back, a pass over the middle. It's off his hands and intercepted by number two for Mission Viejo, Jeff, Jeff Jurgemeyer, on the run inside the 40-yard line. As Jurgemeyer intercepted it, I think he thought his knee had come down and didn't run, but obviously the official said, no, you're not down, you can keep on running. Yeah, I didn't hear that whistle, and that was an excellent interception. The ball was thrown actually pretty good. Tipping off, we saw another interception off the tip. As you see on the replay, that ball was definitely catchable and just off the hands and a kind of a little present. He did Ooh, come his, down, his but the refs like didn't him. rule him down, so he'll take the extra present for a couple of yards. Nice camera work on that to show you that the knee was down. Jason Bavonia, who's usually pretty sure-handed, uh, dropping that one, and on the sidelines, leading the cry, is number two, Jeff Jurgemeyer, like giving Mission Viejo the ball. And that could be the crushing blow with 3.40 remaining to play. To give up the middle to Ekdahl, works his way down to the 35-yard line. This is what the style of play that Mission Viejo has been doing all year long. They did it against a very strong team with Fountain Valley and Santa Ana. They, they battle in the first half, and they just come out and they blow away the teams in the second half. El Toro, who took the lead off of Mission Viejo turnovers in the second half, the El Toro has knocked themselves out of the game by their own turnovers. I think you're right. I don't, Not to say that Mission Viejo is blowing out El Toro by any sense of the imagination. Timeout on the field, 319 remaining to play for uh, last quarter with your score, Mission Viejo 19 and El Toro 14. Weekday afternoons on the Superstation. The laughs are on the house. Tom and Jerry's Fun House. Then, everyone knows that two Freds are better than one. Yabba, dabba, do. The first families of Bedrock want you to feel right at home. The Rubble and the Flintstones. Your host for an hour of prehistoric fun. Tom and Jerry's Fun House and the Flintstones. Something's wrong with you. Tom and Jerry's Fun House and the Flintstones. Weekdays on TBS. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium and a nice look at what's going on on the field here today. Fourth quarter, 1914, Mission Viejo with the lead. If there's one thing we know, Paul Higgins, there won't be any overtime in this one. No, there sure won't. Actually, uh, these high school games won't end and won't end. They can end in a tie, so if they did, it would be at the end of the year for the playoff situation. But Eric Dechtal is having a fine game, averaging just about over four yards to carry, 18 yards, 18 runs for 81 yards. And our stats come from Tyler Suchman. Uh, player at, no, you're not a player, but you're a, uh, a student at Laguna Hills High School, and he does announce some of the Laguna Hills High School games. The PA man, we should say, as a matter of fact, and doing a fine job, so Ekdahl, who entered with 185 yards rushing, now finds himself in the 260 yard rushing category. Meanwhile, uh, the surprise of Jim Agashi, who's been doing real well on the season, has been pretty quiet, but yeah. it really doesn't make a difference when you've got the lead. He's not having a, a bad game. He's not having a great game. I think what he's doing that we're not really picking up, and what happens is when you, you, you single out a guy, you're missing the guys that are making the blocks, and you're missing the guys that are, are making room for the guys to get downfield. You, you know, and for every maybe Jim Agashi not having a good game, you've got a Baldelli, a Hayes, That's who right. is having a good game, so it kind of cancels itself out. It's their strongest team I think Mission Bay has ever had, and and not to discredit anything from El Toro, but Mission Viejo is just, I think they have a football team that you're going to see that could go all the way. They've been really u damaging some pretty strong teams in Santa Ana Fountain Valley. Well, Mike well, Mike Rush, who is the eco-professor, you know, he believes in a balanced budget. So Agashi hasn't done it, but Hayes and Baldelli has. Yeah. And all that counts is that you got the lead. That's what Mission Viejo's got with 313 remaining to play in this contest. Cop on the keeper to the 30. And just inside, brought down at the 28-yard line. A good tackle could have been saving six points off of that play as Mission Viejo continues to move the ball downfield. That was a good demonstration of how Cobb can keep the ball and, and run on the, uh, run to get a first down. He's done it all year. A and copper keeper. A copper keeper. I'm sure that could be a play. All right, 3-10 remaining to play. Fourth quarter, 19-14. And running in for Mission Viejo to give in the next play is Ryan Drake. Mission Viejo, they've got a 19-14 lead. Just quickly remind you, a couple of games coming up on Dimension Sports. We'll have Capo Valley against El Toro in a couple of weeks. And the week after that, Capo Valley against San Clemente. It's a first and ten situation. 
the run to Ekdahl, and there's no pickup. As a matter of fact, he might have lost a yard on the play. Good defense, and we've also got a penalty flag. Now two penalty flags on the play. Both refs got in on the action. A little TV time for them. We want to remind you to stick around after the game for the Sarens Chiropractic Player of the Game, Players of the Game, both offense and defense, as they contribute $50 to each player that uh, receives the player of the game. Here comes the official call. It is holding and it's going to go against Mission Viejo, so that'll take them a little bit back, and I'm sure El Toro will definitely take that penalty. Let me correct myself on that. They don't give the, the money to the kids, they give them to the school. Which do they really? They don't they give should. it to the kids? I can't believe it. <laughs> Amazes me. Surprise. Well, they can't do that. That's against high school rules <laughs> Buy anyway. some new Reeboks or something for these guys. Exactly. We've got 247 remaining to play in this fourth quarter. Uh, what are your thoughts? You know, it's really been two games. The first half, El Toro, second half, Mission Viejo, but what would you say has been the bottom line of Mission Viejo taking the lead? I think that that Mission Viejo found out that they can come back from a first first half deficit, and they knew that they uh, once they get in the situation. I asked Eric Ekdahl, Ekdahl a couple of weeks ago on my Athletes in Motion show, "Can you come back from a deficit?" And he says, "Hey, I think we can. We've got such a wide open offense. Why not?" And they proved it tonight, as they, they have done it. it. And uh, they're looking to keep on to that lead. First down, 20 yards to go. Cop calls the signals. It's a fake. He's on the keeper. Inside the 40 to the 35. And that's where he's brought down by three El Toro men. But the clock continues to tick. It looks like he's real comfortable running the ball now. He's got that confidence back on. As we approach the 215 mark remaining as to play in tell. the fourth quarter, it's a five-point lead for Mission Viejo, and they've got the football. He fakes. He's, you saw in the beginning of the picture Jimmy Higashi in the frame. But now Cop was looking upfield the whole time. I I don't think he was going to pitch it whatsoever. There's a shot at the senior quarterback, number 12, Troy Cop. A questionable first half, but he comes strong with a real sec good second half showing, you know, why he's the leader of this ball club. Hey, number one quarterback in the county. Yep, and he'll probably hold on to that rating. Set out of the eye formation. Running with it is Cop. He's got oh the throw. Daylight. There he goes at 20, 10, and knocked out of bounds at around the five, four yard line. Good run by Troy Cop. He was thinking about pitching it, then saw the opening, darted, and went for big yard. Hey, he was thinking about pitching it, but he saw that open field, and like you said, he took off. Mark. He is a player's player. He he really is uh, some guy to watch. You can see he cuts. <laughs> oh boy, what a great move nice for a quarterback. Nice back, and there goes Cop down the sideline, thinking six points. And it was a touchdown saving tackle by number 23, Mike Miller. He's got 56 yards running from Tyler Suchman. First and goal from the two-yard line for Mission Viejo. A touchdown here will light this ball game. That's Troy Kopp running the uh, 56 yards on the keepers. So first and goal from the two-yard line. Kopp calling the signals, looking to punch it in for six points for Mission Viejo. The give is to Eric Ekdahl, and he's in for six. Touchdown, and this game is just about history as Mission Viejo now takes a 25-14 to 14 lead, 137 remaining to play in the contest. You know what's interesting about that is that Eric Ekdahl has just Across the all-time point record for Mission Viejo in scoring on that touchdown. And I think it should be, well, it's done by one of the key ways he's done it, by rushing. I mean, he's kicked for field goals, he's caught touchdowns, and he runs for touchdowns. And you've got to say the play of Eric Ekdahl, he just might be one of the players of the he game. He could be a player's game. And speaking of the players of the game, Mark, I'm going to go down on field now and let you take it. And uh, it's been a great game, and I'm sure that the game's by far not over. They could come back, but you never know what these two never games. know. I think this just might be the crushing blow. It's time for the extra point. We've got a flag on the field. So we'll wait be, for the official member, member fans, to stick around for the players of the game right after the game. Okay, and Paul's going to take a look-see down to call those players of the game. And that drive was five plays covering 38 yards, taking 222 off the clock. And bolting in was the two-yard run by Eric Ekdahl. Ekdahl now will be attempting the point after. As we said, Mission Viejo leads 25-14. 37 remaining to play in the contest, and it looks like Mission Viejo will be upping their record to 7-0. Time for the extra point. The kick is up by Ekdahl. And it is good. So 26 to 14 your score. We've got 137 remaining to play. This is the Ajo leads El Toro by the count of 26 to 14. There's a look at Eric Ekdahl and a look at the field. This is the Ajo District Stadium. We've got a sold-out house here, and they've enjoyed a excellent night of football. Looks like El Toro will be going down to 4-3, and three, while Mission Viejo will continue their undefeated string of 7 and 0. It's been a game of two halves. As Ekdahl, as we had just mentioned, has become the all-time scoring leader in Mission Viejo history, and Mission Viejo has, has quite a deep history, so that is really saying a lot about the type of play of Eric Ekdahl. The man who kicks extra points,
kicks field goal. Catches touchdown, then runs for touchdown, does it one of his key ways, running for touchdown. This one from two yards out. 137 remaining to play in the contest. And Ekdahl kicks it away for Mission Viejo. Over the head of the returner, and it will go into the end zone. El Toro will start things off, first and 10. Just like to remind you that a couple of games will be coming up on Dimension Cable Sports in a couple of weeks. We'll be seeing the El Toro Chargers once again as we'll be taking on Capo Valley and CIF action. And the week after that, you'll be able to catch Capo Valley taking on San Clemente. So stay with us. Plenty of sports action here on Dimension Cable Vision. Stenstrom's got the ball. Needs he knows to go for a quick score. Back to pass. He's got some time. Looks deep sideline. The ball is caught. Not a first down pickup of about seven yards. Receiver cannot get out of bounds. The catch is made by number 21, Sean Drinkwater, as the time continues to tick off the clock as we approach a minute and 20 seconds remaining to play. Stenstrom calling the signal. As they know, they just need to move the ball up and try and get some quick points on the board. Stenstrom's got the ball. Looking to go sideline. Almost intercepted and incomplete. It went off of the hands of number two, Jeff Jurgermeyer, and then almost coming up with it was number 23, Bill Collins, so it's incomplete. I'd like to thank a lot of the people who have made this game possible. Excellent job done by the following people. Producer director, Mr. Mike McGuffin. Technical director, Tom Hall. Mark Suter, our supervising engineer, and we'll give you the rest of everybody just after a minute. Nemeth on the run, 35 to the 40, and brought down at the 43-yard line for a big pickup. The rest of the people we'd like to thank for their work today on camera, Tim Weber, Bill Sendras, Chris Haug, and Steve Redondo. On audio, Carol Ural, John Haybig, Elka, and we'd also like to thank our statistician man, Tyler Suchman, who's done quite a good job. Mark Heller bringing you the game this evening along with Paul Higgins. Fourth quarter, just under a minute to play. Stenstrom looks over the middle and hits his man for a completion and another first down. Catching the ball is number four tight end, Bo Halley, but it looks like it's a little bit too short for the charges of El Toro as they will fall to four and three. And now with the ball back into action, a look at the junior quarterback, Steve Stenstrom, a look at Bo Halley, and the give is up the middle. And a pickup of about four or five yards as they continue to give away to Nemeth. He has played the game from start to finish. And we've got a timeout call by El Toro. With 39 seconds remaining to play, or score the Diablos of Mission Viejo 26 and the Chargers of El Toro 14. Hi, this is Larry King. I want you to be on my show. You can talk with fascinating people. I'd like to ask Mr. Turner, has he entertained any political aspirations? You can ask him anything you like. I'd like to know, what are your thoughts on football being fixed? Without ever leaving home. I'd like to know who your favorite stand-up comedians are. Just watch my show and call. Something wrong Larry King is live weeknights on CNN. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Name Brand Furniture Outlet in Mission Viejo. We offer genuine savings without gimmicks. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium. 39 seconds remaining to play and another Mission Viejo District, uh, Mission Viejo victory, I should say, on the way. They do lead a 26 to 14. El Toro with the ball, a little bit uh, too late. Uh, just some quick stats. Uh, Stenstrom, 11 of 19 for 140 yards. Uh, Pete uh, Nemeth has rushed for 21 times for 146 yards. I mean, two players who have produced well, but in the end, it was just uh, the strong defense and the opportunistic offense of Mission Viejo in the second half. If you recall, the score was 14-9 at the half, and coming back with 17 unanswered points uh, in the second half with Mission Viejo, including it was 14-3 at one point, so actually the last 23 points of the game have been put on the scoreboard by the Diablos. Back to the action. Stenstrom back to pass, looks over the middle, and it is intercepted. Number 18, J.J. Fortune with the interception. Another INT, and that, we can say, is definitely the final blow with 32 seconds remaining to play in this contest. Mission Viejo, a lot to cheer about, and there he is, J.J. Fortune, who makes the INT for the Diablos of Mission Viejo. The Diablos will up their record to 7-0, and they have truly shown what they have made of in the second half. They could have faltered down 14-9 at the half, but a good pep talk by head coach Mike Rush, and his veteran squad has come on back for the victory. And he downs it 
And that will pretty much do it as it just continues the last 10 seconds ticking away. Take a look at the Diablos of Mission Viejo, who shall remain number one in Orange County with a 7-0 record. 3, 2, 1, and this game is history, ladies and gentlemen. Your final score, the Diablos of Mission Viejo, 26, and the Chargers of El Toro, 14. There's a look at Mission Viejo District Stadium taking a look on the field as the players shake hands as we'll be back with more of the post-game show after these messages. If you're tired of paying high department store prices for fine quality upholstered furniture, discover name brand furniture outlet in Mission Viejo. Your source for Orange County's largest selection of sofas, sleepers, recliners, and sectionals, all at prices you won't believe possible. Name brands like Stratford, Lane, Cavalier, Fairchild, People Lounger, and more. We can offer you the lowest possible prices because we buy special purchases of first quality overruns, cancellations, and overstocks direct from the manufacturer. And our low overhead allows us to pass the savings directly to you. Just listen to some of our satisfied customers. I buy my furniture at Name Brand Furniture Outlets because they have the best prices and the best quality. After looking everywhere, I walked in in five minutes, I found exactly what I wanted, and I couldn't believe how low the price was. They have top quality, big selection, and the best prices in town. Now, for a limited time only, mention this TV ad and receive free local delivery with any purchase of $500 or more at Name Brand Furniture Outlet on Geronimo near Alicia Parkway in Mission Viejo. Welcome back to Mission Viejo District Stadium where the Diablos up their record to 7-0 with a 26-14 victory over the Chargers at El Toro High School. It was a game of two halves. The first half by El Toro, second half by Mission Viejo. Here's a long so touchdown reception mic, okay, we saw doctor. by John Baldelli. This was the second touchdown yet. passes and that was pretty much the blowing touchdown score for Mission Viejo. Back on the field at Mr. Viejo District Stadium, we're going to take things down to Paul Higgins where he's talking with the player of the game and a happy camper, Eric Ekdahl. Thank you, Mark. And with me, of course, is a defense and offensive player of the game. Saren's chiropractic has selected an offensive player and a defensive player from opposite sides of the field. We have with us Scott Topo, defensive player of the game, and Eric Ekdahl, offensive player of the game. From Saren's chiropractic, here is Philip, Philip Sarenjan for the... Uh, for the um, Presentation. Presentation. It's been a long game, guys. <laughs> Here we go. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Scott, congratulations first for you. Uh, two interceptions. Uh, great effort by El Toro. Uh, what we'd like to do is donate $50 to the scholarship fund at El Toro High School in your name. We've got a beautiful certificate here for you, which we'll have inscribed to give to you a little later, if that's all right with you. Thank you. And again, I'd like to say uh, congratulations and a fine effort. Thanks very much. Next, I'd like to move to the uh, offensive player. And uh, it's a great pleasure for Saren's Chiropractic Family Health Center to award you, Eric, you the much. offensive player of the game, and a $50 scholarship also uh, to your school in your name. And uh, it's an honor for me to be here tonight to have you break the all-time uh, scoring record at Mission Viejo High School. And it makes it kind of a special evening, I think, all the way around. I think I'll give it back to Paul now. Both gentlemen, congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Doctor. We'll talk to Scott Topo real quick. Scott, you had two interceptions on the game. You had a heck of a game. What do you feel like right now? Oh, uh, well, I'm a little hurt because we lost, but I know our team did some things that we wanted to accomplish, and so I'm very happy about that. What do you think was the turning point? You guys had a heck of a first half. In the second half, what do you think was the turning point? Uh, we let them drive down one too many times. The first time just really hurt us. We brought our morale down, and that was it from there. So the inspiration in the second half kind of fell flat a little bit? Yes, just a little bit. It almost looked like you needed a break, and then you had a break, and then it went the other way. Did that? What was it like on the sidelines for that? Well, you'd be trying to catch your breath on the sidelines. All of a sudden, you'd end up going back out, and it was really tough because you get a little tired, and, but you just had to give it all. He played a great game, and just to show you guys, these two guys look like to be really good friends. We're going to let them congratulate each other and then talk to Eric. Thanks, Scott. Good work. Eric, you just had a wonderful game, player of the game, and you broke the all-time scoring record. It must be something else for you. Yeah, it was real sweet. Um, we came out, and a lot of our plays weren't working the way we wanted to. We weren't playing that bad, but we just weren't getting the big break. We knew that eventually we had something had to go right for us, so we came through in the long run. It was a good game. It looks as though Coach Russ is really mixing up the plays. Was that his goal, is to come out here and use, utilize the whole team? 
Oh uh, yeah, we threw some deep passes to a couple of receivers and they made some nice plays and then we ran right at them and we were mixing it up pretty good with a couple reverses and stuff. I asked Scott what the turning point of the game was for him, for the El Toro uh, team, what he thought the turning point was. When was it for you guys? I just can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember John Baldelli caught a pass down the line and it was that I just felt a lot of relief at that point. We made that last touchdown. It seems though when Michigan gets ahead, they're really hard to catch. You guys did a great job. We congratulate you, and we hope to see you again. And uh, congratulations on the player of the game plus the scoring record. Thank you very Good much. Good job. Thanks. We'll go back to Mark for the rest of the stats. So as Paul just spoke with the players of the game, just some quick stats before we finish up this evening's broadcast. The final score, of course, Mission Viejo 26, El Toro 14. The big men, uh, first individual stats, Mission Viejo, Eric Ekdahl, 19 rushes, 83 yards. For El Toro, Nemeth, 16 rushes for 115 yards. The quarterback story, Cop, 13 of 26, 256 yards. Two touchdowns, three INTs. Stenstrom for El Toro, 11 of 19 for 140 yards. On the receiving end, Eric Ekdahl, 6 for 87 yards. John Baldelli, the surprise, two receptions, 119 yards and the two long touchdown scores for El Toro. It was Drinkwater, three receptions for 59 yards and one touchdown. Yards rushing, Mission Viejo 126, El Toro 115. Yards passing, 256 for Mission Viejo to El Toro's 157. Mission Viejo compiling 382 yards of offense to El Toro's 266. The first downs in favor of Mission Viejo, 17-12. And the turning point was the turnovers. Uh, Mission Viejo, uh, three and El Toro, two. Mission Viejo taking some El Toro second half mistakes, turning them into scores. And that was pretty much what did decide the ball game. So from Mission Viejo District Stadium, your final score, the Diablos of Mission Viejo, 26, and the charges of El Toro, 14. You've been watching Dimension Cable Sports, Channel 10. For High School Football 88, for the entire crew, my name is Mark Heller saying so long along with Paul Higgins. High School by the name of Doug Moreland. Since that time, Doug has gone on to graduate from Dana Hills and earn himself a scholarship to San Diego State University. Well, that's good news, Doug. We wish you the best of luck and congratulations. Now, turning to tonight's story, over the next month and a half, Dimensions Channel 10 will be covering three high school football games. So tonight, we're going to profile the games and the matchups. So let's get started. For 15 years, El Toro and Mission Viejo have been battling for the bragging rights of the number one team of the Saddleback Valley. On Saturday, October 22nd, they'll once again meet, and you'll be able to see the replay of this crosstown rival right here on Dimensions Channel 10. The Diablos, under new head coach Mike Rush, are already enjoying a banner season. Their undefeated record in preseason play has earned them the number one ranking in Orange County. Look for key offensive players like quarterback Troy Kopp, whose versatile ability so far has kept opposing defenses guessing. And speaking of versatile, number 34 Eric Dekdahl is one to talk about. He is responsible for over half of all the Diablo points scored thus far. He is the running back, wide receiver, and field goal kicker, and he does all the positions very well. In fact, he is credited with a 49-yard field goal against University during the second game of the season. Another strong asset to Diablo squad is returning running back Jim Higashi. Jim sat out his junior year, but has come back this year demonstrating an all-or-nothing attitude. His style of running is low and quick, as he often shuttles and spins off bigger defensive linemen. Mission Viejo throughout has a well-balanced team, with both the offensive and defensive line backing up a quick and well-educated football team. Look for the Diablo to be the team to beat in the South Coast League. For the last two years, the El Toro Chargers have dominated league in CIF play. They have put out Division I football players, who some could very well be playing in the NFL. In fact, Mike Peel, former Charger, is playing his rookie season with the Rams. El Toro in the past had it all. A great quarterback, big and fast lineman, and strong running back. Although El Toro has lost maybe some of the best players that they'll see in a long time, they do have a very good football team. 
Junior quarterback Steve Stenstrom has proved that he has an exceptional arm and that he can run the Charger offense. El Toro, with a record of 3-2 and two in preseason, were beaten by, at the time, the number one rated Barons from Fountain Valley. And then two games later, they were handed an upset by the Tustin Tillers. But look for the Chargers to bounce back in league. They have come through so many times before, and they have an incredible winning tradition at El Toro, let alone an outstanding football program that demands perfection and most often gets it. The second matchup that Dimensions Channel 10 will be covering will be the Capistrano Valley Cougars and the El Toro Chargers at Mission Viejo's District Stadium. This is always a great matchup, and this year, both teams being very young, losing star players like Marinovic from Capistrano Valley and Johnson from El Toro will even make this game more interesting. Last year, the Cougars won the game on the field, but were stripped of the victory and their head coach after allegations were made that Capo Valley viewed videotapes of El Toro's practices. This incident will only make this game that much more attractive, as the Chargers will be out to prove that they can beat the Cougars, while Capitol Valley will be out to clear that bitter taste in their mouth after being stripped of their win last year. You know about the El Toro Chargers, so now let's find out about the Capistrano Valley Cougars. They are a very young team, so young that their quarterback is sophomore Tony Soliday. In preseason, Soliday completed 27 of 48 passes for 283 yards and two touchdowns. His running backs included Chi Chi Bean, an all-around player who started the season at quarterback. Coach Eric Patton, in his first year as head coach, has enjoyed watching his defensive team baffle and shut down opposing offenses. One hot prospect to watch will be number 66, Damon Pacero. He is a junior who eats up running and quarterback as the Cougars in five starts have only allowed 11.4 points a game. But in order for them to win in league, they're going to have to score. And they're going to have to score more than 17 points a game which is their highest total in preseason. Another key player on the Cougars' offense is number 88, David Total, who is Soliday's number one receiver. And once he gets his hands on the ball, he can make things happen, like on this touchdown. The Cougars and the Chargers can be seen here on Channel 10, Saturday, November 5th at 2.30 p.m. And then on Saturday, November 12th at 2.30 p.m., Dimensions Channel 10 will bring you the San Clemente Tritons and the Capistrano Valley Cougars. It will be the first time Coach Dave Alexeri has returned to his old field since leaving Capitol Valley two seasons ago. The Tritons are coming off a rough start, only winning one game in preseason. The team is young and will have to dig deep within themselves to pull out a victory. But Coach Alexeri is an inspirational leader, as the Tritons, pulling it all together, could very well pull off an upset. Look to your cable calendar and local paper for additional dates and times of the scheduled games. So make sure you join myself along with play-by-play -play announcer Mark Heller for all the action starting Saturday, October 22nd at 2.30 p.m. here on Dimensions Channel 10. Well, that about wraps it up for this edition of Inside South County. But as we go tonight, take a look at the footage we captured from the first annual 12K run from Cota de Casa, which includes Olympic miler Steve Scott and 2,200 entrants, all to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Orange County. On behalf of Mike McGuffin and Jamie Gentry, I'm Paul Higgins saying so long for Inside South County. Thank you for watching, and have a good night. This is Dimension Cable Channel 10, bringing local community programming to South Orange County.
The following public access program is not a production of Times Mirror Cable Television. Only the airtime has been made available to the public access producer, who is solely responsible for the content and technical quality of the program. Athletes in Motion, the only sports show of its kind, bringing you up to date on all the local sports and highlights for South Orange County. Hi, join me, Paul Higgins, weekdays, Monday through Friday at 545, as I show you the results, highlights, and special interviews with our local athletes, right here on Athletes in Motion. Hello everyone and good evening. I'm Paul Higgins and welcome to Athletes in Motion. Tonight I have a great show lined up for you. As first, we're going to be going out to Dana Hills for volleyball. And then we'll meet star quarterback David Lowry from Tribuco Hills. And I'll have the results and highlights for week two in the football league play. Plus, I'll have the Saddleback Gauchos and Orange Coast College as they met on Saturday. And I'll have an updated list of all the game tapes available thus far this year. It's a full show, so stay right where you are for this edition of Athletes in Motion. Again, good evening and welcome to Athletes in Motion. Last Tuesday, I caught up with some very talented freshman and sophomore volleyball players as Capitol Valley went up against Dana Hills. The Capistrano Valley Cougars and the Dana Hills Dolphins mixed it up for Frost Soft Volleyball last Tuesday, and these are the girls that next year will be moving on to JV and Varsity. The Dolphins team consisted of a majority of freshmen as Capitol Valley brought in a team mainly of sophomores. In the first game, Dana Hills jumped out to an early lead, playing aggressive and team volleyball. The size and strength comparison of the two teams could not be matched, as the Capistrano Valley Cougars were bigger and more experienced. And that experience would start to pay off midway through the first game, as the size comparison could be noticed on a number of kills and blocks, as Capitol Valley compiled the points. As you can tell, both teams played what amounted to some very entertaining volleyball. Capistrano Valley eventually pulled it all together as their experience overshadowed the efforts of the Dolphins as they won the first game 15-9. In the second game, Capitol Valley really put the freshman-dominated Dolphins to the test. They displayed their all-around talent and proved that on this day, they were the better team. But good competition makes for a better team, as you can bet the Dolphins, although losing, learn quite a bit about themselves and what they can expect as the year goes on. From the gymnasium of Dana Hills to the football practice field at Tribuco Hills, where I caught up with the number two rated quarterback in the county, David Lowry. David Lowry, the number two ranked quarterback in all of Orange County, has been turning heads all season long. And most often, those heads are that of defenders, watching as Lowry's receivers run down the field for touchdowns. 
He is a senior with a great attitude about playing football for the Mustangs, an all-around leader both on and off the field. Last Wednesday, I talked with David in practice as the Mustangs were preparing for Costa Mesa, which they beat handily the following night. David, you're 5-1 and one so far this year. You're having a great season. How do you account for your success? A lot of it's been for the summer p passing league we were at. It got me in a lot of the upgraded teams. Like in, We played Long Beach Poly and Linwood and all those teams up there, and they're real fast. And going through them, I mean, the cornerbacks now, it's a lot easier to throw against them now because they're a lot more fast. They're a lot fast. Is there, any, is there a favorite receiver that you have, or do you normally try to find the guy that's open? Well, we have, like last year, we had Jeff Dooley, and you had to sort of throw to him, but this year we have so many different receivers, but mostly I like to throw to Chad Young and Tim Manning. They're mostly the guys you look for. Dave, you're rated number two in passing in the county. That must feel pretty nice. Yeah, it is. I was, last year, I'd look up at Barnes and see him, like, fifth or sixth, and I was like, wow, and being number two is pretty fun. I mean, and I then, like it. I'm sorry, and then you've got a really good receiver up there, too, with Manning. He's in, he's rated. Yeah, him, DeYoung is, too. Man Manning's doing, he has a yard, just a lot of yards, and DeYoung has a lot of catches. And looking at the stats, out of all the passers you have thrown, uh, you've thrown just about more passes than anybody else except for three other players. Yeah, <laughs> our coach likes to throw. Is there, it seems like a real relaxed atmosphere out here. It seems, that today's a, you know, Wednesday, you got a game against Costa Mesa, which we will see the results in a little while. But do you think that this relaxed attitude has any effect on the team? Yeah, it doesn't, a lot of, the first game you always have the pressures, but Last this year, I felt a lot less pressure. I mean, they just told me I got a good advice from Coach Anderson. Just said, "Don't choke." <laughs> that was about it. But it's a lot more laid back, and they don't take put as much pressure on you until the game is actually there. So you don't have to just work up to it. What is going to be your personal goal? I know, I know what your team goal is, but what would be your personal goal this year? It'd be nice to go to school, go to a college that I can play football for, maybe, and baseball too. I like to play baseball. Now, in order to pass, you've got to be well protected, and your line has protected you really well this year. Yeah, we have a lot better line. When I was a freshman, I'd get sack handing off the ball. <laughs> and this year, we got Tim Crispin and Dan Yarmulock and Troy Harmon and Alex Kim. So, so far this year, you've won big just about every game. Do you think that Tribuco has the type of team, when it comes down maybe to a league playoff game, that you can win under pressure? Can you complete a pass under pressure? Yeah, I think we, we go into games, like if we're winning some, we'll go, okay, you guys, we got to complete this game. It's for the game. This pass right here is for the game, and we complete it. We do a good job. Dave, rumor has it that if you throw 20 touchdown passes this year for your winter formal, Coach Schreiber is going to lend you his Rolls Royce. Yeah, we made a deal before the season came, and he's the kind of coach that comes to uh, practice with a Rolls Royce hat and leather jacket and penny loafers on. <laughs> so that's quite a deal for you. Yeah, something to look forward to. <laughs> Almost like a paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this school has only been here four years. You'll be the first graduating class, actually, that has started as a freshman. You can't win freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Does that feel kind of special to you now? Yeah, it does. I mean, being the first four-year class going through here, and we've gone from losing to a winning team now. I mean, we, we weren't that good when we first started off. We had a makeshift team, sort of, and we've come a long way. Any predictions for this season? Not really. I just, I'd like to see us. We have a good chance to win league if we win a couple of our next games, and that'd be a good game between us and Woodbridge. That'd be nice to be able to play them for league championships since they blew us out last year. David Lowry, before the Costa Mesa game, had 1,455 yards and 13 touchdowns. And all of this just on 78 pass completions. The only team that will contend with Lowry and the Mustang will be the Woodbridge Warriors. So look for the results here on Athletes in Motion starting November 14th. On the AIM scoreboard, Tribuco Hills rolled to a 28-12 win over Costa Mesa, while University stuns Newport Harbor 24-7. Modern Day keeps their playoff hopes alive with a 21-7 win over Bishop Montgomery, and Huntington Beach shuts down Marina 21-10. Getting back to David Lowry and the Mustangs, I have to say I was very impressed with the total camaraderie and togetherness of the entire team. From the head coach all the way down, Tribuco Hills has an outstanding football program that has come a long way in just four short years. And another program that has come a long way is the Michiviejo Diablos. Here's the highlights as we go out to Missions District Stadium from El Toro and Mission Viejo. who will be number one rated Mission Viejo in all of Orange County at 6-0. They'll be taking on their crosstown rivals, El Toro, at 4-2.
Emotions are running high, and for the expert look at what's happening tonight, Paul Higgins. Thank you, Mark. The matchup tonight on paper has to favor the number one rated Michigan Ayo Diablos. First of all, they have the number one rated quarterback in the county with Troy Cox. And they have the number one scoring player in the county with Eric Ekdahl. The Diablos are a good football team, and they are well-balanced all around. On the other hand, the El Toro Chargers are a young football team. And so far this year, they have lost two critical football games right on this field. Look for the Diablos to mix it up. This is a big game, a game that we played with a lot of emotion and intensity. The key to the game, I think, will be for the Chargers' defense to keep the Diablos' offense off the field. The key to the game was in the first half for the El Toro Chargers' time of possession and capitalizing on two Mishimeo turnovers. El Toro came out with a great deal of emotion and intensity. They surprised Diablos with a solid offense attack and a wide open do anything once style of play like a fake field goal, a fake punt, and a lateral, resulting in a pass and a TD. For the Chargers, the scoring started in the second quarter with this call. First down and 10 for El Toro. They've got the ball at the 13-yard line, working out of the I formation. Receivers wide to either side. Stenstrom back to pass. He's drink looking six, going end zone to Drinkwater, drink and he's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown, Drinkwater. Touchdown, Drinkwater, proving why he is one of the best wide receivers in Orange County. It was a one-on-one. -on -one the Chargers' next score came off this run by David Nemeth. This is where it counts. El Toro with the ball. First down and 10 from the, from the Diablo 33-yard line. Centrum calls the signals. The give straight up the middle to Nemeth. To the 25, the 20, the 15, go in, the 10, go the 5. In. Touchdown, El Toro. Oh, that was wide open. And Nemeth is just having quite a first half, and the Chargers take a 13-3 lead. 2-0-3 remaining. But on the next possession for Mission Viejo, Troy Kopp hit Don Baldelli for this touchdown. Mission Viejo to see if they can score a touchdown Zexal, before the end Zexal. of the first half. Looking deep over the 21. middle. The catch, yes. The 15, the 10, the 5. Don Baldelli down for Mission Viejo. And they're right back in the ball game Woo. for Mission Viejo number 21, wide receiver John Baldelli. It almost looked like he was going to throw to Ekdahl and then broke up the middle to John Baldelli. Mission Viejo scored again with a field goal by Eric Eckdahl to make it 14-12. And then, once again, John Baldelli got in the end zone. Cop with the ball. He's rolling right. Can't find the receiver. Now goes deep down. And the catch made at the 30. 25. 20. Cuts back. He might go all the way. 15. 10. 5. And in for a touchdown. John Baldelli with yet another big catch. And Mission Viejo is taking the lead. Mission Viejo then put the game out of reach when Eric Dekdahl scored within the five-yard line. So first and goal from the two-yard line. Cop calling the signals, looking to punch it in for six points for Mission Viejo. The give is to Eric Dekdahl, and he's in for six. Touchdown, and this game is just about history as Mission Viejo now takes a 25-14 lead. 137 remaining to play. Mission Viejo held on to win 26-14 to go 2-0 in league play. Let's now take a look at the rest of the standings in the South Coast League and the Pacific Coast League. The standings in the South Coast League look like this. Mission Viejo is on top with a record of 2-0. Capitol Valley, El Toro, Irvine, and Dana Hills are all tied for second with a record of one win and one loss, while San Clemente fills up the pack with a record of 0-2. The Pacific Coast League looks like this. Woodbridge and Tribuco Hills are tied for first with a record of 2-0. Orange High School and Laguna Beach are tied for second with a record of 1-1. And Costa Mesa and Laguna Hills come in last with a record of 0-2. To catch you up on all the game tapes that are available, let's go to the new updated Athletes in Motion game tape list. The game tapes that are available for football consist of the following. Damien at Capistrano Valley, Point Loma at Capo Valley, Capo Valley at Mission, Fountain Valley at El Toro, Tustin at El Toro, Tribuco Hills at Dana Hills, and San Clemente at Tribuco Hills. The list continues with Dana Hills at Laguna Beach, Dana Hills at Santa Ana Valley, and Dana Hills at University, Laguna Beach at Laguna Hills, San Clemente at Tribuco Hills, and Elsinore Christian at St. Margaret. Finishing up the game tapes for football, it's Grossmont at Sadabat College, and Sadabat College at Orange Coast College. In volleyball, it's Laguna Beach at San Clemente, and Capitol Valley at Dana Hills, and this is Frost Soft. For water polo, it's Orange Coast College at Sadabat College. And finishing off with girls cross country, it was Michigan at San Clemente, and Capistrano Valley at San Clemente. Remember, if you wish to acquire any of their preceding game tapes, please call 364-3261. That again is 364-3261.
Because we're short on time this week, next week I'll show the highlights and results of the Orange Coast Saddleback College football game. Remember to join me next week at 545 here on Athletes in Motion. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Athletes in Motion. I hope you've enjoyed watching the show. And until next time, I'm Paul Higgins saying so long for Athletes in Motion. Thank you for watching, and have a great week.